three, two, one. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Coming at you live from the power of the internet. This is um, Adam2988, <laughs> and I am uh, I did that fine enough. And that is, uh, this is Sardonic Cast. Yeah, I could be that. I'm Adam from Your Movie Sex, and I should have got more sleep, but I didn't. I'm uh, Alex from IHE2988. And that sucks about your sleep, and I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Stressful times, stressful months. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in, a, uh, I'm in a room where I've set up my desk, <laughs> and I can record this. There's a little bit of echo, and a lot of stuff that still needs to be done. A lot, a lot, a lot of shit. Always is with moving. I yeah. hate moving. Moving sucks. I hate it. It sucks, and it's expensive. Mm-hmm. If only I had what like three hundred thousand dollars in crypto right now that i just don't want to take out in case it gets bigger <laughs> was that the figure i think i think it was like it started at a million and he still has like somewhere between one hundred fifty thousand and three hundred thousand. but he's just like you know he could he could withdraw it and probably fix a lot of the issues he complains about in the documentary but instead he's kind of just keeping it in crypto and just hoping that it goes up again oh, I which didn't is a weird it was still in it that's, that's oh yeah bizarre. he chose his phone interesting choice yeah there's a lot of it it's kind of fascinating there was a documentary what was the title <laughs> the dark sad life of boogie <laughs> 2988 official documentary okay boogie nights right <laughs> boogie boogie nights 2988 <laughs> Sad. I'm trying to find the IMDb page. There it is. The Dark Sad Life of Boogie2988 by Mike Klum. This got a lot of attention on the internet. This got everybody it just was just came out of nowhere. It. Yeah, exactly. This was like his premiere for his channel. Which I don't think cool. I know this Mike Klum guy. I think it's no. his first doc. Um, pretty sure he like he lived with Boogie for months and worked in partnership with him to get this made. Which yeah. <laughs> only boogie would allow this to happen because i feel like most people want to hide how embarrassing some of the subject matter is but i guess he counts as a quote-unquote lol cow and uh, the attention currency is what he's after yeah he has uh, a mental problem where he just i don't know probably more he than just one, he just wants to explain to the world how pitiful he is and that is how he advances through life or something or that's how people donate money yeah. to him, is I guess. Maybe the... he gets off on it a little bit. It's hard to know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, like, I'm not... <laughs> I'm trying my best not to be uh, devoid of empathy. Because um, I do feel bad for the guy. Even though pretty much everything that's happening to him is his own fault. And he continues doing it, even though he seems conscious and self-aware enough to to be able to address his own flaws and issues, but kind of just chooses not to uh, do anything about it, which is... I think that's what frustrates people about Boogie, right? Yeah. Cause he's, yeah, he's always looking for that that feedback from the fans of people to prop him up, but he always is putting himself down, and whenever he gets into any drama, he, like, just goes on his back foot, or... I don't know. He's, he's all over the place, this guy. Um, the, yeah. the documentary definitely delves into it and just brings up a lot of confusing ass questions but I suppose we should just start with like what did you think of the, the production of the documentary because that's what that's kind of what kept me in I, I went on this video when it had I don't know maybe like 20,000 views it had like just been uploaded nice. um, I was like yeah I'll see what this is about and the the level of quality of it was kind of keeping me going like oh they, they clearly made a real documentary not just like a Shane Dawson you know, pretend quote, documentary, unquote, <laughs> pretend YouTube yeah. documentary. Like it's an actual documentary. There's research, and you can uh, dispute certain facts and figures that I've heard after the fact to maybe not accurate or been exaggerated. But that's a problem with many documentaries. So mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting all the way through. It's only fifty, yeah, five minutes. Um, yeah, interesting. And I'd I'd, I'd, I'd watch something else from this this Mike Clum guy. Uh, yeah, this what he wants to do. I I think he worked in some sort of film production before this like i don't know doing commercials or something or at least You'd like imagine with some other team or something um i like this route and i'm interested to see what he covers next 
uh, I don't know if that's necessarily just going to be like, oh, let's find a YouTuber who fell off. <laughs> like, uh-huh. I don't know if that's necessarily going to be like every project. Um, but I, I, I do appreciate that there's content on the platform that tries a bit harder. Um, and, and sometimes it's kind of interesting because I, I got to thinking about like, okay, well, you can still make something technically that's more effortful than that. That's not considered like a real documentary in a sense. Right. Um, mm-hmm. you, there, there's, there's a kind of, uh, stigma and a kind of interesting way that we categorize, uh, certain media, especially with new internet media. And so I think of something like, okay, I did like a two and a half hour Kimba documentary, I guess, but I don't call it a documentary. I made a YouTube video. It would be a documentary if I got a camera out and did some like interviews with like lighting, (laughs) right? Then it would be a documentary, I guess. Or maybe I can still call it a documentary, you know, like there's people that release films and film festivals that they say are documentary, like Room 237, was barely a documentary (laughs) um that was more of a youtube video than a documentary to me um but yeah it's it's kind of interesting i do like that uh the director really kind of got into the source material um despite the weirdness of boogie approving it because you don't necessarily want to do that with the documentary, like have the subject be approving the end result, uh, because then that makes it biased. But I think with this particular doc, Boogie is just so not self-aware and thinks that everything that's in the doc will make people feel sorry for him and give him money or yeah. something and help restart his YouTube career. And maybe he's just looking for attention just so he gets the numbers back up. God, it's so weird and it kind of frustrating. Shame. Like. Sorry, I'm I'm rambling a bit, but uh, the I think what pisses me off the most about him <laughs> is that he's not even really creating good content, but he acts super entitled about it. He's literally just like his entire popularity popularity on YouTube has been be a fat guy, pretend to have a lisp, and like flip a table. That was his first phase. Then his second phase was interject on every single popular thing that was happening on the internet, some drama, and then take the most absolute centrist take possible (laughs) to the point where it was so consistent where I didn't even believe that he had real opinions and he was just making things up because it was just like, okay, you have the most centrist take on literally everything and you never really did. Okay. Right. And so it's like, okay, you're getting in front of a camera and just talking, right? You're not even like... You're not even putting effort into your content. Mm-hmm. Like no fucking shit, your channel's dying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he is a confusing one because he's what like mid twenty tens. People were starting to quite like him. He was more of like a I don't know Philip DeFranco type figure. You know, granddad of YouTube. He's been there the whole time, and he's like giving his opinion on everything. But yeah, the more he gave his opinion, and the more middling it was, people kind of started getting frustrated and seeing through it. Uh, and yeah, they kind of delve into that with the documentary. There's, there's like a point where the 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 narrative and the way it's being presented kind of like breaks or something. It's been a few weeks since I've seen this, right? And mm-hmm. he's got to like go more into the investigative part. Like the the director breaks the fourth wall and like yes. closes his laptop and that looks was my at favorite the... part. I think that that was the best choice for the documentary. Is like yeah him becoming a character in it which is not like you know other documentary filmmakers have done it david farrier Mm -hmm. michael moore etc but i feel like his inclusion really gave it a much more relatable and kind of like empathetic lens to view the film from because he's he's like literally just making like i don't want to make something that's just like depressing like everything he says is just the saddest shit i've ever heard <laughs> like i love that 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 made it a bit funny and it it, it makes the documentary pretty self-aware too uh yeah yeah and gives it a focus after that halfway point where it's just dumping the most dramatic things that have happened with the you know the gun incident the crypto stuff the hookers yada 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 
and then it's like so what's he doing now what prospects does he have and there's the whole like mock job interview thing um yeah also, which is kind of funny and yeah where he just shoots himself in the foot intentionally because he doesn't really want a job and he like wasted everybody's time <laughs> yeah. that's the frustrating part yeah because it's like you're clearly playing this up for the camera in some way like yeah. you're not you're not being earnest in the way you're engaging with no this idea because you know this would be juicy for the doc it's like a toddler thing yeah so it's more like where w what is the motivation is it just like craves the attention or needs money or both or i think it's just like a mix of all of it yeah uh, i mean <laughs> human beings the way that our brains work is the the patterns of both emotions and behavior in response to things in our lives if you make that a consistent thing in your life then it starts to become something that's more difficult to break away from yeah something that can at first be a conscious choice can wind up becoming essentially a reflex as your life continues on if you're doing the same thing over and over yeah it seems like you know, I'm trying to psychoanalyze a guy through a fucking YouTube documentary, but, um, <laughs> you know, it, it seems like Boogie's just the type of person who saw that as some sort of solution, maybe consciously, maybe subconsciously. Yeah. And now it's just, it's just what he knows how to do. And so he just does it and he just, you know, I, I've met a bunch of people before where, you know, you try to help them out of a situation and they'll do everything in their power not to be helped and they just want to be miserable yeah. and complain about it and they don't mm -hmm. actually want to succeed and they don't actually want to fix their life. And they they just, their, their pattern of behavior is just being miserable and sabotaging mm -hmm. themselves <laughs> and everybody yeah, around them that tries say, to help There them. is a long pattern. Right? He's been online for a long time. It must be yeah. close to like two decades at this point. It must be getting there nearly. Um, yeah, it's just a continuous pattern and there is just like a... This is just like sad and pathetic at a certain point and it's almost like weaponizing uh, people's sympathies at a certain point. Like, I've, I've spoke to Boogie once. Um, Same. And he, and even in that call, he was like whipping out the the references to his traumatic childhood in like in detail that might not be appropriate for someone you've like just started speaking to. Yeah, you know? um, <laughs> but I think I think you know there's certain people that will say those things is like knowing that putting that out as a prerequisite to a relationship will give them some sort of advantage over them. It, yeah. Even if that just means a sympathetic foot, sympathy. I don't even think it's necessarily consciously like uh malicious. I don't think that no. Boogie thinks no, he's think like, so hey, I get control over them. No, no, no. But it is one of those things where it's like, okay, well, they know that people will treat them more cautiously or, you know, with kid gloves or um you know, be nicer or sympathetic. There's some people who are particularly vulnerable to that kind of thing in the sense of there's some people who are easily manipulated by that kind of thing. And even if yeah. it happens to them many times in their lives, and even if they come across many of these characters, there's people that will like go out of their way to like take advantage of that type of person and kind of seek that person out. And it's been a very yeah. long journey for me trying to like, not fall into those patterns because I mm -hmm. <laughs> have been very susceptible to that kind of thing, which is also why this kind of pisses me off in like a personal way. Um, yeah. You know, there's, there's people that will literally, if they find out that you're a person that has been abused by other people or manipulated by other people, they will use that information to try and manipulate you and be like, Oh, I'm sorry that you like, and, mm. and like, Ugh, and it it just reminds me too much of that type of person. So I don't know exactly. I think I'm being pretty charitable when I say that he's not doing it consciously. But I would rather, you know, assume ignorance over malice You'd for hope most people. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> anyway, hope, so. to talk about the production of this documentary, <laughs> <laughs> um, I really liked what it was doing with the tone. Um, mm -hmm. It was well edited. I liked the music choices. I thought it was a great concept. Like you picked the perfect subject to to make yep. this, and hopefully now with the success of this documentary, um, he'll be able to explore different options. But I just don't know what those options would be. Um, yeah, yeah. I I I think that part of this documentary's biggest problem is that it is it is um, 
it's something that everybody who knows who Boogie is is watching because they're like, oh, yeah, this fucking guy or whatever. Mm. It doesn't do a great job at giving context for people who aren't kind of already familiar with the lore. So this is a film that mm. is under an hour long. And it could, it easily could have been an hour and a half plus. Um, it easily could have talked about how Boogie bought a Tesla and like begged his fans for money for that out of nowhere. And he was yeah. like, he was talking yeah. about how, you know, like, there's so much to the lore that I think would be important information to include in this documentary, especially given the angle at which this documentary is coming from, the fact that. The the entire thing just seems like a fucking greatest hits collection of this guy's fuck fuck ups, right? So you might as well include all these other things. Um, I kind of appreciate the restraint though in that respect, because like considering how like, I dread to think how many like pages I've just opened like his Kiwi Farms. It's like what two thousand five hundred thirty six pages worth of material just on there. And that's not even talking to the guy. The dramas the. The history, there is a lot to cover there. So yeah. I, I can understand that, at least from his perspective, why he'd maybe want to start where he does with like him in the bath. Go, and sticking to the numbers, I quite liked mm -hmm. that angle of it, because um, that's been like one of these questions up in the air. People know about his like investments. Like his financial situation? Yeah. But then that also adds to the frustration and kind of the impact of the documentary for me, where it's like he's talking about how... He needs a certain amount each month and to pay off this and that. Meanwhile, he's living in this like pretty luxurious, like giant house. He owns property like... <laughs> and refuses to rent out half of it. Like, fuck you. Yeah, buddy. true. Rent, rent it out. <laughs> you own the property. They can pay your fucking mortgage. But supposedly in when one of his family members passed away, he was, uh, he inherited like a house or something as well that he refuses to sell and the whole, all the crypto stuff. And it's like... Whenever he's been, he's been challenged on it, he was asked like, "When when the crypto earnings were up, why did you not at least take out enough to just pay off your house there and then?" To which he just says, "I was so depressed at the time that dead people don't need a place to live." Uh. <laughs> yeah, you can use that as an excuse for anything. It's just like, oh, I'm yeah, depressed exactly. and I do this self-destructive thing because I'm depressed and I'm making myself more depressed because I'm doing these self-destructive uh -huh. things. Like same okay. for the hooker stuff and all of that. Yeah, it all feeds into this one inconsistent uh character study i deserve an la 10 not an arkansas 8 oh my god that's what i should have opened up with <laughs> Oof, <laughs> that's the quote yeah, you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to be hearing that because uh, that's that's maybe one of the more controversial parts of the video speaking on that kind of stuff is mm -hmm. there's a big section on his his girlfriend his like 20 year old girlfriend uh he could be like her dad i guess um and they, they 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 dance around that just enough, but then it kind of leans a little bit into what you're saying with this weird sort of manipulation. It can come across as yeah. where there's that whole scene where he sits her down and is like, "I'm old and I'm so obese, I'm probably going to die soon." There's nothing but I can do that about suck? it. <laughs> I can't start <laughs> making life choices now. I've accepted my fate. Yeah, so she's in bits and like hurt by it. And yeah. It's like, Man. <laughs> It's like fucking just torturing this poor girl and just showing her do like the fucking the montage of her doing all of his yard work and shit. I'm like, damn, mm -hmm. you know, if she wasn't doing all this shit for you for free. Maybe she could get a real job and help pay some of your, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, yeah. maybe, maybe it could be 50, 50 on the house. And then like when he is talking about the budgeting, like he's going through his list and he's like, oh yeah. Boulder's Gate just came out. That, that's, <laughs> I have to play that. And it's like, come on, man! Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's, it's something like very unserious about a lot of the misery that's being presented, and that's not to like downplay any of the actual trauma and horrible stuff he's gone through. But it's also like, man, you're how old now, and it, this is the state you're in. Like, a lot of people will be set for life uh, if uh, you'd kind of played your cards a little bit smarter you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah um it's it's <laughs> it makes me want to avoid that <laughs> mm -hmm. it makes me want to avoid having that happen but i think i'm not that <laughs> shitty so i i guess Gee. i think i'll be fine that's what makes it so intriguing is like i feel like most people in his situation would not make a lot of these decisions <laughs> um yeah don't what makes buy it the crazy story that it is don't buy a fucking tesla for no reason yeah 
literally for no reason like you have poor impulse control you just exactly, you have poor yeah. impulse control on spell spending and that must have been what in the mid 2010s so it'd be like top price like 100k if not more so like, you yeah you got this? like the most expensive model and he was he was literally asking for his fans to cover it he was like he made a video about it he's like guys <laughs> i just i need to buy this tesla and i know that it's like expensive but he, oh my God, the way he was trying to frame it was as if he was doing the world a favor because he was helping to make environmental cars better. Oh like, it, like <laughs> it was, he, was, he was framing it like he was doing a good deed to society and that this was a thing that like needed to happen, which is I don't know crazy. Why that, uh, it, like, fuck, it became that's so such expensive. A... That's so expensive. Like, I... If I make a video asking my fans for money, it's going to be for some real shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, not not for a Tesla. No. It's going to be for, like, a medical no, bill. No, it's ridiculous. <laughs> like, or some I don't shit. know why that was such, like, a stereotype, but I don't know if it is quite anymore because Tesla's, they're not really the status symbol in the same way they were a few years no. ago, but, like, so many YouTubers were just hopping on the Tesla bandwagon. I remember Scarce driving around one. Mm-hmm. It's just like, look at the self-driving. Look at all this. Just flagrantly it's a toy. wasting money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I mean, if you have the money to waste, fucking go for it. You know, yeah, if, no, that's the problem. $100,000 like, doesn't mean themselves. anything to you. Fucking go for it. But if you, have to, if you have to make a YouTube video to your fans and the subject matter of the YouTube video is, you need to help me buy my Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe, maybe you should think a bit about whether or not you need it. You know? well, yeah, exactly. Because then when it comes around to him being like, yeah, 800 bucks for medical insurance, 500 bucks for medical bills, 750 bucks for doctor's visits, 950 bucks for physical therapy. And so, well, Tesla could <laughs> pay for that for a long ass time, booger. I was on, <laughs> I was on Amazon a couple days ago and I saw, I saw like a, a new, uh, like SSD card. And I was like, fuck, I could really use some more memory for this PC mm. that I'm setting up. And it was like a Black Friday deal, and it was like between mm-hmm. 100 and 200 bucks. And I was like, you know, I'll need this eventually. It's a it's a good sale price right now. But then I thought, you know, this has already been a really fucking expensive month for me moving and mm-hmm. not being able to work as much while I'm moving, so my paychecks are lower. And so I decided not to do it. <laughs> yeah, I decided, some, pe- I decided some have that no even though it's something though. I could no. use for my work. And would make uh-huh. my work. I'm like, no, I'll just keep moving things onto the external drive for now. This is uh-huh. probably a, like I'm. I'm gonna try my best to not make like stupid, unnecessary purchases right now. I'm not gonna buy like a fucking Tesla <laughs> ever. <laughs> no, damn. No, forget about it. Yeah, it's just a, it's a weird environment because the, the the barrier to entry, I guess, is so minimal on YouTube that yeah. These people are going to rise to the top for being for making bad decisions, basically. So then, what do you do when you're boogie and you're kind of as famous or infamous, depending on who you ask, as you are? Like, what can you even do at that point? I mean, you probably could turn around, but as you're saying, these patterns, everything's so deeply rooted, it requires such a like. Oh, that reminds me. Yeah, like the the part towards the end where he 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 takes like. What does he take? He like goes into the woods with the guy and takes a. Oh, he takes cycle. mushrooms. <laughs> which That's is it. He like takes mushrooms. Not even really like necessarily what you should be taking for your spirit journey or whatever. And also, it's just some fucking like <laughs> dumb hick and like what do you, you you'd call him yeah, a shaman? It's weird. just like a f- redneck with like some Pabst blue ribbon or what? Like I don't know. Yeah, that's right. That's that, right. That was no, my you're, mental you're exactly image. Right. Yeah, he. It, it seemed like you it have was. To do drugs now. That was kind of placed at that point in the documentary to, I guess, try and end it on a more hopeful note for the future. Whereas supposedly that happened before, was it before the fight? Because it shows, that's right, it shows his fight with the, was it Wings of Redemption or whatever? Yeah. The law here is just crazy to keep track of, but then he loses that fight. But I guess they didn't want to end there, so they ended on the drug thing instead. <laughs> So I get yeah, it. It a bit of creative license. I think it, well, it, it, it they did the drug thing, and then I think the like most of the ending was the relationship, the girl thing. And I don't know if the documentary said this or if I just found this out because I started after I watched the documentary. I um, 
I watched Mudahar's takedown and I watched Charlie's takedown and both were like mm. Mudahar's was particularly um <laughs> vicious. Scathing. But yeah. it, it, but needed. You know, it was like you know, I I I get it. I get it. It, yeah, I get it. It's funny how the result of this documentary that Boogie approved is like, okay, you got some attention back, but everybody's kind of like, everybody thinks you're a massive piece of shit. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> now a lot of people are just learning about like how much you suck is basically the result yeah, of it. I think he's just trying to lean into the no such thing as bad publicity. Cause he's like, he's got his new podcast now. Yeah. The, the log how podcast, whatever it's called yeah. and all this kind of stuff. So I don't know. I, yeah, I don't, it, w- what else do you do if you're, desperate for money and don't want to put any effort into anything and just kind of want to get money for existing and being a personality then i guess you kind of have to lean into the law cow shit yeah but even then it's like see i can't empathize though because i have some sort of like humility so like if i'm, I'm thinking my brain in his position right now it's like, like how do we sort this problem right here right now okay down, downsize the, the the house sell the other one get that money out of the, the ethereum Right there, you've got like hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know? So when he's like, when he's kind of complaining in it about how hard Dumbai is, it is hard to stay on his side with that kind of stuff. Yeah, most people don't have the amount of money that he currently refuses to withdraw from crypto. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if he's just blind to that or thinks it would be more, get more engagement or what. I, I don't know. He's, he's kind of a enigma. Mm hmm. So I, um, yeah, I, I liked Mike Clum as a character in, in the documentary. Um, I hope that the success of this encourages more people to try and do things like this. Because I think that hmm. having this kind of like extra effort uh, content, it's a lot better than um, what he says he was inspired by. I don't know if you sa- saw this credit at the end, but he was like, inspired by Sunny V2. I was like, oh, that's interesting because that's maybe some of the worst content on the internet. <laughs> I, I don't know. You, like, I find Sunny V2 absolutely unwatchable. I, I don't understand why it, that's a huge channel, but. <laughs> I don't even think I know who Sunny V2 is. They're the. Well, I've just you've, searched you've them, probably seen the. On the Twitter controversy that. <laughs> they basically. After uh, Mr. Beast's friend came out as trans, they did this whole like hour long, like. Is this gonna ruin Mr. Beast's career? Like what? And it was just like, oh, like a, a weirdly video. speculative, like kind of inappropriate. Like you don't know these people, and you're making all these weird judgment calls about their their relationship. But like so much of their content is just like r- exaggerating things that are not big deals into weird drama farming kind of formats. <laughs> and, oh, I have seen one or two of these. I've yeah. been scrolling through the most intense arguments on Joe Rogan's history. This kind of stuff. Yeah, and just like they're, they're, the the commentary that they uh, offer is just so fucking substanceless, <laughs> and they don't really say anything. And I just I don't understand why anybody likes that channel. It's very bizarre. Um, I've seen like maybe two or three videos but not all the way through because i just found them to be unwatchable and that was the inspiration that is interesting yeah i find that fascinating because that content's like actually shit I don't think they, <laughs> it's, like, it's really well, bad this, this sunny v2 they don't they don't present it like a traditional documentary do they it's no like- <clears throat> and what mike clum wound up doing is he at the very least because of him actually going to the person's house and filming them and getting to know them and be interacting with them. I think that that inherently kind of provides the opportunity for what you create to be done through a more empathetic perspective inherently, because I think so much of people covering other people that they don't know or will never meet in real life or, you know, just kind of making a video about someone through the internet that can really easily devolve into something that's just like a little more malicious than it needs to be or like yeah you know that sunny v2 video about like mr beast like friend like Mm -hmm. you wouldn't make that if you went to their house and filmed them like you wouldn't make that if you interviewed them you wouldn't make that if you like had ever seen them in person it's just something that can only be made when you're like so detached from the subject matter 
that you're making these like absolutely baseless, weird, wild speculations that are just completely inappropriate and just mm-hmm. absolute cringe. Right. So I, I don't know. I, I like yeah, that. Mike I'm Trump surprised. About I thought it'd be that. more maybe inspired by, I know I has done a couple of these. Yeah. I rewatched uh full force after this too. Cause I was, I had a hankering for it and my boyfriend mm-hmm. hadn't seen that. Shout out to the yeah. IDubs documentaries. Those are good. Hmm. Getting away with it's pretty interesting. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. That is that is weird to learn. Because I, I, I'm, I'm just kind of curious, like how he must have lived with him for like months or at least darted backwards and forwards yeah. for like a lot of time. Like how's, how did he fund this? How did he, <laughs> you know, like, uh, yeah, I'm curious about that. Well, it said that Boogie was not compensated. So <laughs> that would save some money and then uh i don't know just depend depends on how much time you're investing into something you can it's just a weird project because it's like not only did he have to invest all that time like living or at least spending a hell of a lot of time with boogie but boogie also had to approve it and like who's like who approached who like what the it's just a very weird thing the way it's come Mm -hmm. together yeah interesting project i'm excited to see more Sorry for shitting on your inspiration, Mike Clum. I know you're listening. <laughs> they sent me an email after I subscribed to their channel. <laughs> no, funny. Um, yeah, Sunny V2's shit. Bad content. Boogie's shit. Bad content. <laughs> Documentary was pretty good. Yeah, I, I'd like to see more high effort stuff. Six out of ten from me. There's a lot more that they could have included, and I don't even think that it necessarily would have changed the uh, outlook or perspective or the degree of empathy that it's approaching the project with. I don't think that including more information and context would have changed that. There's so much more you could have done with it. I think that this documentary could have at least been a, another like 30 minutes and just even only just for context, and it doesn't have to necessarily right. be about like all the greatest hits and fucking Tesla shit. It could, it, 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 there's, there's tons more context they could have provided in, in all aspects of like Boogie's life and et cetera, et cetera. I, I felt like this was a great, very thoroughly interesting watch that, you know, a little rough around the edges here and there, but um, could have been more and was very entertaining. Very solid first feature. Yeah, I'm pretty much there with you. I'd give it a six out of 10 or three star. Yeah, very solid first documentary. I like seeing this stuff. Uh, in the YouTube space specifically, because I'm sure. Yes. I mean, what what is that? It's, well, it's just past four million views, and I'm sure that's that's probably more than a vast majority of documentaries on Netflix or Amazon Prime or whatever. What do you want to pluck? Like, <laughs> there's definitely an audience for it. There's a hunger for it. So I hope we can keep this going. Maybe we'll just make boogie documentaries forever if there's that much content on it. <laughs> just keep yeah, everybody back. gets to make one boogie doc. <laughs> yeah. Damn, I should get in on that. I can make it enough. Duck. They're enough, but everyone gets one uh, Kiwi Farm page. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, I was also going to mention. I don't consider Kiwi Farms to be like a trustworthy source on anything. They kind of just they either. don't really care about. Ver- it's literally just like a drama forum, and they don't care about verification or accuracy. So it's like w- the the people populating someone's page are all people who have a vested interest in shitting on that person. So they're willing to believe like any, you know, rumor or post or if somebody else says like, I heard that this happened to this person, then they'll just run with it as fact. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm I'm not a I'm not a fan of uh, that as a source for any kind of reliable information. I don't No, no. I don't consider no, it to no, be no. at all. No, me neither. Yeah. Uh I was told to ask you mm-hmm. what British people call whipped cream in a can. Um I would just call it whipped cream, to be honest. Well, fuck. Somebody on the what did you subreddit. Hear? I don't know. Somebody on the subreddit was just acting like I should ask you that. Maybe it's got some. You... <laughs> maybe I, f- I feel like I've been like Americanized over the years. <laughs> maybe like I, f- I swear it's whipped ca- cream. It's not like something. I would, <laughs> it's not something I really buy. Okay, the first thing that shows up in my Google search from the Daily Mail, uh, they call it squirty cream. <laughs> 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 squirty cream all right where do oh I, is that is like the lie, hold on let me find this it might be a 
I guess maybe enough. Oh, Asda, Asda does per, uh, squirty cream. <laughs> okay, let, what if I search up just the word squirty cream? Well, you might not like it. Yeah. Okay, no, it's dictionary is the first, uh, the first result. Is it Oxford squirty cream British whipped cream dispensed from an aerosol can? A hot chocolate with squirty cream used in a sentence. <laughs> yeah, so there are four results on like Tesco's website, which is okay. like a big supermarket <laughs> chain here. Nice. Squirty cream. President squirty spray cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Food yeah, heaven whip spray cream, cream vegan. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay. So President just, squirty. I gotta, I gotta keep my eye out for that. Yeah, I gotta get me some squirty spray cream. Damn, I thought Bill Clinton <laughs> was President Squirty. <laughs> True. All right. Um, we saw a film called Leo. 2023 and although there is another 2023 film called leo apparently this one's the netflix yeah, one that. it's this has got adam sandler it's got bill burr and um the reason why i was kind of drawn to this and decided to watch it uh, a couple different reasons a there was only time for like you know one movie i could watch with my boyfriend before he leave for thanksgiving and then i was fucking spending three days moving shit um yeah. And I didn't want it to be something that he would maybe fall asleep through. Uh, this looked decent enough. And the fact that it has a notably higher audience and a uh, critical score than Disney's current new film in theaters, Wish, which Wish, I thought yeah. at least some people would like because of the animation style, the art style choices or whatever. Uh, but it seems to be being like very poorly received. Mm hmm. Yeah, I've, so, I've noticed the same. Well, it looks very boring. Very whereas this one seems to be catching people off guard. And I think to a large extent it did for me as well. Um, although it is, it has a lot of issues. But I kind of fucking like <laughs> this movie. And okay. <laughs> even, even holding myself back from like... no. <laughs> I want to be careful not to overrate something just because I was pleasantly surprised by it and had yeah, worse expectations. I was about to say. <laughs> but I, yeah. I did, I did like enough about this movie that I feel like I could watch it again. Um, there's, there's, I, I liked, I liked what it was doing, but I can tell from your tone that you don't feel that way, and I'm interested. To I don't it. know if I'd watch it again. Mm -hmm. I'd put it on for like a child or my child or whatever. I think it's appropriate for them. You have a child. Um, I got so many children. I'm like Drake over here. Oh shit! Got kids everywhere. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. I got I got a few thoughts about this movie. I was surprised that you messaged me about it at all. To be mm -hmm. honest, um, <laughs> this is when you checked out. Uh, but Adam Sandler and that Netflix duo, I guess it's like a big thing. It gets stuff made. It's got Tuatara as the lead character. I'm a big Tuatara fan. Who? So I don't know. <laughs> it's just the breed of lizard. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, I don't know how much... First, Okay, f let's just reel this back a minute. I'm getting lost. Uh, Ad Adam Sandler, right? He's he's done a lot of voice acting over the years. Um, <laughs> with lots of different characters. Like, the, that Christmas movie that's unbearable. Was it's it's nights, you, the Hanukkah nights. movie, you fucking racist. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah. Oh, of course. I haven't actually seen it, to be fair. I've only, I've only seen the critic video on that one. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's hazy in my mind. Uh, but then you've got like Hotel Transylvania or whatever, and he's he's fine in there. He's got to do that Transylvanian Dracula voice, so I think it like, holds no, him back from those. doing some of his... They're actually all right, they're at least the first one from memory. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway... Oh, that was the first thing that I, the big hurdle I was trying to jump over was that his voice that he likes to whip out. It's okay, and I feel like for the first half of the movie, he's just he's just going a, a fifteen percent to Adam Sandler. I know that's why people like love him. That's why they watch him. But he's doing that that fucking voice, man. It's so it's so grating. It's so annoying. Mm -hmm. with the way, and he's supposed to be this old ass lizard. He's like screaming. What was that line he screamed? Um, because, of course, it's an Adam Sandler, Happy Madsen production, so it's got to have yes. product placements absolutely everywhere. Cheetos. Um, that's right. He screams like, Cinnabon! Or whatever, you know. He's, mm -hmm. I can't be doing with the the screaming Adam, Adam Sandler. Um, <laughs> so that, that was like that was hard for me to get over. But, which is kind of frustrating because I, I quite like this character of Leo, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of a fun 
cute premise. Um, doesn't take itself too seriously. Well, really seriously at all. It's like goofy as hell. And the, it got some like kind of hearty laughs out of me at points. That and that was what I was not expecting at all. Uh, some genuine humor, mostly yeah. from that Bill Burr turtle. Bill Burtle. Because uh, Bill Burtle. Because <laughs> the whole the whole premise is it's like these two these two animals are stuck in. What's it? What do you call it in America? Is it kindergarten? A bit older. Than uh, how old these kids are supposed to be. Elementary school. Elementary school. I guess yeah. Primary school in the UK. These 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 animals that they've been stuck in this cell basically for like decades and decades and decades, watching generations of kids come through. And yeah. Leo hears that he's nearly seventy five years old, and that's the age that Tuatara's lived to. So he's going to die. So then he has this existential crisis, and he's like. I'm gonna become a a nice uh, teacher for the students who's better mm -hmm. than the the horrible teacher who comes in as a substitute, and that's kind of the the thrust of what's going on. It's lots of scenes of him giving advice to the kids with their various problems, and that's when the funniest scene with Bill Burr comes in is because he he gets jealous of Leo getting all of this attention from the kids. They keep taking him home, <laughs> um, and he's given given this advice. And then Bill Burr manages to sneak in with Leo one one night and goes home and uh, gives his go at giving advice. And it's a very funny sequence. Um, I don't know if it's a, a mix of the writing and just Bill Burr's delivery. He's mm -hmm. obviously, I, I, re I really find Bill Burr funny. I think I he's that really good. Um, and his delivery was really funny when he said, yeah, I picked you because I like your style. Now tell me your problems. I'm talking <laughs> turtle over here. And all this kind of stuff. That was like really funny to me. That was hilarious. That was probably funnier than anything Leo does himself. Uh, he's mm -hmm. not supposed to be, the Bill Burr character is not supposed to be the heart or anything. So I don't think that matters. Um, yeah, that was like the most memorable scene to me, to be honest, that, that whole. And anytime the turtle's doing anything, because uh, of course there's like the, the standard kind of saccharine kids movie stuff where it's like, you know, overly cute. It's got a bunch of annoying kid characters doing their thing. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 like, it's not, I was so mad when the first like 10 minutes of the movie, I'm like, the just just the kids and they're all singing. I'm like, the fuck is this shit? And I'm like, I wanted, oh, of course, yeah, I wanted the, to see some the musical scaly. Angle. I wanted to see some, some, <laughs> some scaly. <laughs> I thought it was a scaly movie, not a kid, dumb human kid movie. That's right. You're saying that they were singing. That yeah. was another surprise. The song like, oh, is like a weird. kind of musical, uh, but not a very good one. If that was, <laughs> if that's what it was going for, it, it it couldn't find the balance for me. Where it's like I'm fine with the songs, but you've either got to make them good songs or you've got to make it funny. And a couple of them are funny. A couple of them are funny. Um, the one towards the end, where it's like one of the last lines is like it's talking about like the fucking uh, endorphins from crying. There was that one, but it's more that that's right. It ends with him like commenting Saying, on like, how uh, I'm somehow not going to die alone. That was it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it was like it, it has this little sprinkle of like, oh, this is actually kind of like funny for an adult. Like it's not yeah. just slapstick. It's not just dumb. There's some there's some stuff clearly in there. Like the Bill Burr character, he like looks at the camera at one point. Dick joke. He's like I was talking about his tail. <laughs> like a, dick joke. I, that was so funny to me. Like, it it wouldn't have been funny. Or as funny if they didn't do the zoom and like the musical cue that and the, yeah. the raising eyebrows like I like that moment of self-awareness. What I found fascinating about this film is, you know, there's a lot about it that just I hate doesn't work, but mm -hmm. I liked the stuff that I liked about it. I liked so much that it kind of made up for it. And also the average Disney movie or let's say most animated movies or kids movies or just movies in general <laughs> that are trying to like get laughs out of me or be interesting or weird. It just mm. doesn't work in any way whatsoever. So for this film <laughs> to have, I don't know, like at least five to ten different parts in it where I'm like genuinely laughing and I'm like enjoying it and, you know, it, I'm, I'm impressed by it in in certain ways. That's a lot more than most animated movies that come out in a year you look at like I, I i pretty much watch every oscar nominated animated film and then some yeah right um and i enjoy that this one seemed like it was trying in a lot of different ways it felt like to be, from to the be writing, oscar level sorry 
to be Oscar level. No, but well, I mean, okay, maybe I some, maybe say. somebody, maybe. So mm. I, I was gonna say, it seems like between the writers, there's probably one really talented writer, and then a couple shit writers, <laughs> and they're mm. they're almost kind of arguing with each other over what the film should be or which direction it should go or you know what lines should be in which places because there was a moment where i guess like during one of the songs uh one of the characters rhymed one word with the same word and after she's done singing uh the character leo adam sandler yeah. he literally just calls it out he's like nah, i don't know if that was more of, uh, that wasn't really a a rhyme you were just kind of saying the same word again mm-hmm. i feel like you know, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I feel like um, whoever wrote the lyrics was probably a different person than uh, the person writing the dialogue, or at least that part of the dialogue. And that when maybe it was just Adam Sandler himself writing this part, because he he did produce it, and I think he has a writing credit. Yeah, he does. He is credited as writer, yeah. Yeah, so he, in my head canon. Adam Sandler looked at those lyrics and was like, that's shit, but I'm just going to call you out for it in the movie and then add that level of self-awareness. And I feel right. like that sort of thing was done like a few different times in the movie where it seems like one writer was just writing something really shit. <laughs> and then Adam Sandler or yeah. somebody on the writing team was like, mm, I'm going to call you out a bit for that. <laughs> we're going to we're gonna change it into something self-aware here. That's a good observation because I, I noticed that when I was looking at this film on... Uh imdb that it does have three directors and three writers uh and i think yeah i looked up one of the writers robert smigel he worked on <laughs> late night with conan o'brien Ooh. and like snl and stuff so and i noticed there was like a conan easter egg on the oh, yeah. shelf of one of the kids rooms they had like a bunch of pop vinyls or whatever Ooh, and nice. uh, one of them was conan so i don't know if that was i don't know mm-hmm. must be the writer getting that in there but uh that's kind of like they were they were batting like one for three for me. That's kind of how <laughs> it, it felt. Like it, every yeah, every it one of the three feels jokes. like that. Where like one <laughs> yeah. writer is really talented and the other two suck. <laughs> but but the the talented yeah. writer shines through in such a a way that like I was just happy to connect with something and just happy to to be into something <laughs> even if it was only for one third of what was happening writing wise. Um, but yeah, there were there were some some really funny jokes and really good ideas in here too. Um, mm. I think that it was refreshing to see a movie aimed for kids that uh, was a bit more kind of explicit and risk taking. There's weird uh, kind of graphic violence and like his tail gets cut off <laughs> twice. There's someone yeah. like missing fingers that you can see and like. There's a pink eye joke. Yeah, there's there's some <laughs> weirdly adult stuff in there. Um, and it, it, I don't know. I, I felt like it wasn't the standard paint by numbers, you know, pretend to be Pixar thing. Um, no. The main character is like 75 years old. You don't really see that often in terms of like for a kid's movie in terms of the trying to be a relatable character. The only other one I can think of is like, up and even then yeah. and up it's like well the you know they you have the little boy and it's more of a dynamic duo of like i'm so grumpy because you know which turns yeah. it more into the standard formulated okay you've got the two characters on an adventure and one of them serious and one of them's goofy like that even up is like way too hard into the f- formulaic kind of area whereas this film even though i could tell where it was going uh structure wise for a good chunk of it you know, as so, soon as he got to the first kid, I'm like, okay, so he's going to have a pep talk with each of these kids and they're each going to have like a different moment. It did enough that was just so wacky and kind of like out there and weird that I couldn't see coming that it kind of gave me almost like Madagascar three vibes in terms of just like, <laughs> it was just kind of just doing shit and not giving a fuck. And it, it was, it, it was doing what it wanted without necessarily feeling like it had to constrain mm. itself to, what a kids movie is supposed to be or what a narrative is supposed to be and i like that it that it went into something that was a bit more free form 
and it wound up creating an experience that I was like, okay, this this connects with me more because I'm not just watching the same thing that I've already seen a billion times. I'm seeing something that feels a bit more refreshing and, and new. Um, mm. The whole, like, <laughs> this weird plot device where they're all mad because they find out that they're all his side hoes. They're like, they're like <laughs> I thought I was your special friend. <laughs> like, <laughs> shit like that. And, like, the, the bus lady, like, <laughs> killing him and, like, <laughs> or trying to and... Like there's just so much weird shit that happens in this movie that I, that I just find so bizarre that that's what they wanted to do. And even though yeah. every choice didn't work, I was at least appreciating that it was a choice that I wasn't familiar with and just, Hey, I'm seeing a new choice. You know, I, I like that. It's interesting. You bring up mad three over here. Cause <laughs> that's, that, I guess that's kind of one of the X factor things I was, I was missing here. Cause mm-hmm. every time it was doing something a little bit crazy, a little bit mad, I was like, oh, this is cool. I like this. Like what you're saying. The mm. more kind of edgy humor is playing with like that death and yeah, this gore and all this kind of crazy stuff that I was into. It was more the formulaic stuff and it, it, it never like, it doesn't pick its lane in terms of that stuff. I feel like Madagascar 3, it's just, it's just doubles down on the craziness. You know, you've got this woman running through walls, jumping on helicopters. You got mm-hmm. bears falling in love with lemurs and <laughs> crazy. It's just mad. It's just nuts. Yeah. It's not quite that level because it does want to have that admittedly no. quite nice, like, uh, point to it, to the mm-hmm. character. You know, so everyone needs to find your Leo. And it's like a good message for little kids. And he's like, like a mentor. Yeah, don't, don't keep it inside. Like, communicate your feelings yeah. and the stuff about crying and talking about the scientific stuff with the endorphins that are released and all that. So that's, that's cool that you managed to sneak that in there. I do appreciate that. Um, but I guess my one of my bigger issues is kind of the visuals of the film. I Ooh. think the character animation is pretty good. I think a lot of that animation is fine, but... I don't think it fully utilizes the medium. Um, no, a lot of really, really flat uh, stuff going on here. Yeah, especially in terms when it of comes like texture to, or movement or no, it's more the the main characters. I was kind of okay with the character animation and the character mm-hmm. design and a lot of the way that worked. That's where obviously most of the work went into. It's more like background stuff, environments, all super generic, flat, boring. Um, yeah, some of the backgrounds much are interesting not. going on, and especially color as well i thought like the use of color was pretty pretty flat Mm -hmm. so i i don't know i just feel like there's so much you can do with animation and just have it be yeah it's a it's a talking lizard in a school and it's a school that looks like a school i the way you're describing it would the the way you're describing it is almost like what my expectations for it were it was (laughs) were (laughs) i don't know um i i did get more out of it um, in animation, especially because I, I like that with each kid, even though like the songs are like kind of not great. Um, I liked what they were going for in terms of like, okay, each song, they're going to try and do like a little bit of a different genre. And they also did a different kind of animation style to it. Some of these styles worked better than others, but they were definitely mm-hmm. trying. They were definitely trying to do something at least visually interesting for certain sequences in this film and showing that they weren't just like one note, like, okay, we're going to make this bland movie that, you know, you, I didn't, I didn't feel claustrophobic and I didn't feel like, Oh, that the setting is to the same, the entire movie. Um, I was also impressed by the amount of character models that they had because Mm -hmm. that's, you know, know, a huge time and expense when it comes to animation. I was actually shocked that we saw so many different uh, animal characters. And it wasn't Mm -hmm. just like, you know, the human characters, a lot of them you can kind of like copy and paste and tweak, especially like the toddler weird things running around. The, those little minions or whatever the kindergartners. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was kind of a fun design. Yeah, that was, that was (laughs) terrifying and fun. Um, But yeah, all the different, you know, the, they have the, birthday party or whatever and then all the animals that escape and then all the animals in the forest later and um each one of those is a different new unique character model and i remember being impressed thinking like wow they really didn't cheap at like the cheetos money actually went somewhere um so i don't i don't (laughs) cheetos yeah yeah, I, i don't think that it was like a lazy um or bad looking animation in any way uh sure there was nothing that i 
loved or that stuck out to me about like the backgrounds. I wasn't really focused on that too much, but I was impressed in in, in a few different ways with the animation in this film. I, I, I think that lazy put is really ways that the right word. I'd be did. very I'd be very curious what the budget is on this because um, yeah, it is definitely it does not look the same level as a Pixar, as a DreamWorks, no. as anything like that. It's, it's honestly nowhere close. Um, and I think they use a lot of that. I, 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 I'm still struggling to find the best way to describe it, but a lot of animated movies, especially the ones with uh, more of a budget, uh, restrictive budget, to use this kind of like frame interpolation stuff, I don't know, to like do it in-betweens or something that... My eye just catches it, and it's like I can just tell, and it looks a certain way. That the actual character movement, yeah, it's not every yeah, shot. Some of it is um, not great. Yeah, especially and the animal characters, like like the way that they were running. I was like, yeah, you didn't have, they didn't have, give them the time to properly use references, or you know, the, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. But that makes me, I'd, I'd, I'd. I'd criticize that harsher or less depending on the budget and it's a netflix production so we have mm -hmm. no clue what they were working with here so i don't know they might be spinning silk out of shit for all we know i don't know um yeah that that was notable to me um whereas like i don't know it's just such a creative medium you can do so much and the only time i felt they were like getting towards that was there's quite a good shot where i think it's the first night leo was taken home and it's like locked to his perspective and you oh, can yeah. see the reflection of his face um and it's going through a bunch of environments that was cool that was creative that's more of what i, I like that a see. lot i remember that, yeah. that, that, that was probably the best shot face yeah and you can just see his face kind of hovering there in the reflection um yeah that was good i like that but overall i don't think there was i don't know i just want to see more when you're when you're picking uh animation as your medium mm -hmm. i just want to be able to reference at least a couple sequences or creative ideas or something it's a lot more kind of standard and yeah you know what i what, noticed what about the expect? animation mm -hmm. it was horny as fuck they were like <laughs> dude what the fuck were they there was so much ass in this movie like even the even the teacher even the substitute teacher it was just like her butt for like so much of, the the yoga mom mm. i'm like you're trying to get on like a subreddit of like hot <laughs> moms and kids <laughs> I forgot like, about the like yoga surely mom. there's right. a subreddit like that right yeah, like this is one of the was... horniest fucking th this was like hey there's a fetish for everybody and we're gonna make sure everybody's represented here <laughs> like <laughs> that, that's what it felt like watching the movie that's <laughs> like, kind of an adam sandlerism though as well right is it? elizabeth's comedy is just will have like a really <laughs> hot actor in it doing something i don't know i haven't seen that many but that's the yeah. vibe i get um, yoga mom in this movie was like you you you're trying to do this <laughs> like you're <laughs> like, yeah you know what you're doing and you're actively trying try to, to get obscure. the pervert audience you're trying yeah, to get they the were pervert not trying demo. to obscure that at's all they not at all they, they had everything front and center yeah <laughs> there's there's a lot of weird shit in there. there was vor there was consensual vor in this movie oh what was the vor he was eating the bugs and then one of them flew, the few of them flew into That's his right. mouth that's right. That was probably not. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a vor guy. But I'm just. <laughs> there was water sports. That was a weird one. No. <laughs> Bill Bertle peed all over himself, and then it oh, showed yeah, him in like one. in a jock strap. That was weird. At the end, it showed like he was wearing a jock. I always strap wonder with these: is it like? Is it... Yeah, it's what you said earlier about contributing things to ignorance other than like actual malice. But like these these kids' movies designed for like pretty young kids and it's got this like crazy imagery going on. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't there's some there's things that I would not put in kids' movies, uh water sports being one of them. I don't care if it's for humor. <laughs> uh -huh. Right? But there's like depending on like the age that you're watching something at these things get imprinted onto your brain in weird ways. Like furries can trace back like which movie <laughs> caused their <laughs> affliction or whatever. Right. You, we, 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 if you're introspective enough, you can figure out like, Oh, what did I watch as a kid that caused me to be attracted to this sort of thing? Right. Mm -hmm. So even if it's not explicitly sexual or, you know, trying to be attractive, there's these things are happening in some way that, people haven't really figured out the details of so there's some things that i would probably just not include in kids movies just to be safe but yeah you know i guess nobody everybody's kind of we're all just kind of doing uh this experimentally 
Just make it yeah. as we go along. Also, yeah. now yeah. every kid's on the fucking internet, so who cares? <laughs> They're screwed. Oh, yeah, Fortnite skins. Yeah. <laughs> every kid's on the internet anyway. You can't protect them from anything. So just give up. Whatever. I uh, I got to shout out the probably the worst joke in the movie, the Uh-oh. the whip nay nay joke. Just, oh yeah, just so he sucks. Just beneath, just beneath the movie. Yeah, yeah it was like, like what year is didn't it? Need that. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that was some old out of date shit right there. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be don't be doing Um that. I liked I liked that they <laughs> again just adding to like the level of weirdness and memorability for this. The e- even moments where the film is like tropey and they do the whole like you know, she's about to get caught for her plan and she's like, No, he's lying. I like mm-hmm. that that scene is taking place and on paper it's a trope. But in practice, it's like, okay, well, this is happening with an old substitute teacher lady versus a turtle in a drone, <laughs> like Bill Bertle <laughs> on a fucking drone. And the only people spectating are children. And there was just something, there's something funny about that to me. Just like there was something that as that, a yeah. scene, like just, I, I, there, there's things about this movie that stick out to me and that I just like. Well, the fact they had... Like that drone thing, I thought was like lame at first, but they kind of committed to the bit enough, and they kept yeah. like they almost did do a bear, uh, limo love thing with the drone. Actually, come to mm-hmm. think of it, like it was it was kind of going that way, and there was like a COVID joke where it like pushes someone two meters away and puts a mm-hmm. mask on the girl. Um, but there, there were the more tropey resolution to me was like the whole. There's some lie that's going on and it has to crumble at the mm-hmm. end of the second act. Yeah. So uh, everyone can be mad at Leo for a bit. Uh, yeah. That was more the like, oh, okay, here we go. We've got to get through this then to get to the next. It bit. wasn't yeah. so overly drawn out. And again, I loved the fact that it was just, <laughs> I thought I was your special child. <laughs> like the, conceptually, the way that that drama was, was injected <laughs> into the film, like, I found that to be more funny than dramatic. And so maybe maybe just watching it through this lens of like part maybe partially the low expectations helped me to watch it like with a semi ironic mm-hmm. lens. Um but yeah, there it, I, that just was just the part I wound up enjoying. I was like <laughs> I like one that good that was line in the movie just for after the, the fallout. There's like a kid who makes a comment the next day. When they come into school, he's like, I couldn't sleep considering what Leo did to us. It was something <laughs> like really earnest and goofy like that. That that kind of was memorable to me. But yeah, a lot of plug in play stuff. That it's mentioned to death with like every Adam Sandler movie, but the the product placement is pretty egregious. It's um, <laughs> it's about as bad as a David Fincher film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maybe not cool, that though. bad. <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a little less than a david fincher movie maybe uh actually I, I, maybe i dig that like the killer going after leo or something oh crossover that, they're both netflix that, we can do it we can netflix. make it happen <laughs> oh you know what pissed me off about this this huh? is like there's i need to find out exactly how many movies they've done this with maybe if somebody can help me um make a list and fucking shame them for it make a but list fucking netflix released this in 1080p you own this is a netflix property put it out in 4k there's clearly there's clearly some dumb old fuck at netflix going well this is a kids movie they're not going to be able to tell the difference it's just kids watching (laughs) that's clearly what's fucking happening why else would you do that this movie was released in fucking 1080p uh the the sea beast oscar nominated film last year released in 1080p um like it, it oh, is the only so it's kids, a netflix thing That's it's weird. a netflix thing and it seems like the only times they don't do it is when there's like another studio slash distribute like i think ori in the dark might be fine because it's a dreamworks netflix thing yeah right yeah i'm pretty sure pinocchio was released in 4k because that was done with uh i forget who but um another production company plus Netflix. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't, it pisses me off because the movies are not made in 1080p. They're made in no. at least 4k. And you just have to press a different button when you're exporting it. <laughs> but they also, they like charge <laughs> extra for film. 4k. It's I know. One of the, like tears. <laughs> they, they charge extra for it on your fucking service. So if you, if you made this content, Netflix, you own the rights to this content, 
release it in fucking 4K. Why don't you do that? It doesn't even have to be HDR. You don't even have to put effort into the 4K. It can be non-HDR 4K. Just p- put it out in a higher resolution, you assholes. Really? I think I'd take the HDR over the 4K. I don't know. I feel like HDR mm-hmm. makes quite a difference. But anyway, yeah, it's just the minutia. Um, I mean, yeah. But that's crazy. Good. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. I'm pissed. Man. But yeah, that's stupid. That's so stupid. <laughs> mm. Oh, well, it'll, be, it'll probably be like deleted from history in like a year anyway. <laughs> yeah with the the way this is going yeah we need physical media speaking of the pinocchio netflix guillermo del toro recently put out a tweet saying that it was Mm, our moral duty to buy physical media because of the uh lack of uh certainty and uh you know cinema preservation when it comes to streaming and digital and i completely fucking agree so hey everybody who's not me Get on it! I'm doing my part. Yeah, I'm. I'm like, I'm, I'm bordering on the edge now of like, because I've been, I've liked the whole idea of having a digital library, like not having to take up all this space for storage. But now it's like, oh, so like regular current stuff just disappears. You can't even argue they... that it's like cheaper now, anyway. Like the, all the streaming no. services are just the like it's as expensive as cable, more now mm-hmm. even, depending on how many things so, you yeah, have. I might as well. I might as well join Get some in physical on that. media. Yeah. Join us. Get some 4Ks. I guess uh, going back to Leo, yes. there's one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, a big question mark for me for the beginning section of the movie was like, how are they going to, or are they even going to bother to address the talking animal side of this? Like, <laughs> oh no, this is like the main, this is the, the plot pretty much. <laughs> it's just animals, I guess. I, I, I can it's tell all if it was like all animals or if it was just... <laughs> The, the lizard and the turtle. It seems to be all animals. But they have like a pact where they won't talk to humans. Kind of funny. Yeah, it's like Toy Story. They addressed it. It's just you... you yeah, accept, it's like Toy Story. It's a kid's movie thing that you just accept. And once they say it, it's like, oh, we're operating on this logic, I guess. Okay. Yeah. You can talk? Yeah. All of this. They're just yeah, a, consciously deciding to not do it. And then it'll until he gets to the age of seventy five, and he becomes the first animal ever in the history of animals <laughs> to ever do this. And it, yeah, who cares? It's yeah, dumb. it's not really a film to break yeah. down like that. So I just want to, I, I just want to express to anybody who hasn't seen this movie yet, I have not seen Wish, but I can pretty much guarantee you that I'm that I'm gonna enjoy this better than Wish because Wish looks so fucking bland. I'm not gonna get any like genuine laughs out of Wish. Yeah, no. who cares, right? I wonder if um, that would get an Oscar nom just for being. I know, busy. right? Is this is this <laughs> a, the year where? What is it? What was the Pixar movie this year? It was Elemental. Will that get an? Oh, Oscar Elemental! Nom? I haven't even seen that yet. Uh, so this this probably. year, we've got Spider Verse Two. We got Elemental. We got Wish. We got Leo. Would be fun <laughs> to, to just throw in there. There's no way, man. There's I know no there's no way. way, but we'll see. We got fucking Boy and the Heron. Ruby Gilman teenage crack and alert. That's the Oscar winner. Oh, the, the Mario movie. Yeah, I think that. Oh, Mario, the Mario movie. movie. So yeah, there's six already that are like expected contenders. Uh, sorry, five, not including Leo. So I would like to see Leo there, but I don't think it's going to happen at this point. Oh, and that Ninja it's Turtles too, film as well. Oh yeah, Ninja Turtles. There's six that seem obvious. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, I don't think Leo. I'd be very shocked if Leo got a nom over any of those, to be honest. But I mean, there's no reason know. why there has to be only five, but yeah. No, you're right. They can you're just right, make, but... if they wanted to promote more movies, they could. Anyway, uh, I want to make it clear to anybody listening who hasn't seen the movie. I don't think this is a masterpiece or anything, but I liked it. I liked it overall, and I will say the first eight or nine minutes is absolute unbearable cancer. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's the worst get, part. It, you have to get past the first like eight minutes. And then once it gets to the dick joke, which is about nine minutes in, then it, you know, it starts getting pretty, pretty good. Yeah. It bears its teeth a little yeah. bit. I kept getting confused at first. Like when you first messaged <laughs> me saying like, Oh, let, let's do Leo on the next episode. And I was like, at first I was getting my, the wires crossed and thinking like, what Rio? Those like oh. <laughs> bird movies of Anne Hathaway, <laughs> like uh, Rio back. <laughs> I remember enjoying the first Rio to some degree. I remember degree. nothing about it. Yeah. There was a good villain song, I think. Will I am. He was in this. Oh, 
I forgot about that. <laughs> what do you... Uh, so I give this one a 5 out of 10. I enjoyed it as much as a 6, but I am... Uh, I am also self-aware and enough and trying to keep myself in check enough to know <laughs> that there's so much about it that just is just so bad that I don't think yeah. I could justify giving it a six, but I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, and so it's a, I think it's a, like a high five for me. Just I just, I really loved it. It was risk taking. It was ballsy. One of the writers was really talented and was able to do enough that they were able you know, they made something that I connected with, even if not all the way through. And even the parts that were cringe, I'm willing to put up with it and I'm willing to suffer through that again to see the parts that I like, honestly. I'll yeah. watch this movie again. I can understand that. And I think I actually give it the same rating, mm -hmm. two and a half star, five out of 10. Um, but it was pretty standard for me. It was more, yeah, the one out of three jokes was actually getting to me, making me laugh more than I was expecting. But I was expecting like, <laughs> I wasn't expecting anything, to be honest. So There you um, go. Well, thanks yeah, for watching it. Was it. All right. Yeah, yeah, I, I enjoyed my time with it for what it's worth. I would, I'd not protest like a child watching this. It's very appropriate for its demographic, and they might be hungry for Cheetos, but who isn't? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that should be illegal. Is um, product placements in children's entertainment? There's some countries where that is illegal. There's some countries where they've decided, like, no, kids can't, they don't even have any comprehension of what they're seeing, right? Like, mm. this is completely unfair. <laughs> You're like, this I mean, is. Again, though, it's too late, though. Like, they can see, they see a million ads on TikTok. This know? is the real it's grooming, really. Is ads on yeah. for kids. Like, oh, yeah, you need this, right? So kids are going to mm. watch this yeah, fucking yeah. movie. Like, I want Cheetos now. Fucking groomer, Adam Sandler. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> yeah. it's bad. It's like they can't fuck it. They they don't even know what's going on. They can't consent to like watching it. I mean, they can't consent to fucking anything. But still, it's like that just seems so malicious. Yeah, it's just greedy. Product placement in a kid's greedy, movie. greedy, greedy. I recommended a film called Aguirre, Aguirre, The Wrath of God, directed by. Werner Herzog. Uh, yeah, I learned how to pronounce it by watching the movie. <laughs> nice. I'm so glad you have to say the title. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 1972. Uh, there's a couple different versions, I guess. There's an, well, so they were, the actors were speaking English when they were recording the film. And so I think the English dub, even though some of it's dubbed, I think a good chunk of it is just audio that was recorded there too. So that's the one I watched instead of the German dub, which apparently, like, they didn't even get Klaus Kinski. Like, they got a different person to dub over. No, he wanted too much over. money. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay, that's the version I watched. I watched the German Okay, version. I'm glad you watched the other one. How was it? Yeah. Uh, once you get over that, I think it's fine. I was able to engage with it fine. Yeah. But it's more just confusing that it's... Sp the characters are Spanish, speaking English, dubbed German. So that once, once you get over confusing. that, once you get over that, that's fine. Yeah. So what was your version again? What was the difference? Sorry. Uh, mine was an English dub, but I mean, most of it wasn't, didn't seem to be dubbed. There were some parts that were like really obviously dubbed, but th th I mean, a lot of it, see, I, I was watching the version that I think had the most amount of dialogue that was recorded on set really because i was reading the uh what was recorded on set was pretty much entirely scrapped okay it was such low quality like, well then maybe they just or? did a good job uh dubbing over a it. good dub oh, okay yeah. that's interesting that kind of makes me want to yeah maybe the entire thing was that. dubbed but i mean it, it wasn't distracting for the most part it was just only a couple parts that were like really obviously dubbed and it was also two channel i think the german one is 5.1 but if you care about that sort of thing <laughs> yeah um, yeah, I wouldn't know if it's up, man. So this is uh, in the filmmaking landscape. Uh, Werner Herzog is quite the character. Um, oh, I love him. What he <laughs> he's a very interesting man, <laughs> and um, he's done a lot more documentary films more recently. Uh, but at this period in time, he was creating some. Very bizarre, very high effort, uh, kind of madman uh, projects where he uh, decided to, you know, he's kind of like a renegade filmmaker 
in the sense where he does a lot of crazy things <laughs> to get what he wants out of the movie, to get his shots or to get his concepts on film. Uh, Even to get a camera to film it. I exactly. I was curious about film that. School. Oh, he stole it. <laughs> Oh he yeah, he totally did. Was that for this? <laughs> I think so, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a quote from him saying, it was a very simple 35mm camera, one I used to make many other films, so I do not consider it a theft. For me, it was truly a necessity. I wanted to make films and needed a camera. I had some sort of natural right to this tool. If you need air to breathe and you're locked in a room, you have to take a chisel and a hammer and break down a wall. It's your absolute right. Damn. <laughs> quite you know, if, good, good if, quote. <laughs> If I if I ever need someone to to testify for me in front of a judge, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. get Werner Herzog because he'll be so poetic you'll forget that that it is actually theft. <laughs> Still, mm, <and> that <laughs> he'll voice, be so poetic he, about it. He doesn't even need to be poetic. Like, he can deliver any dumb shit, and it sounds like intriguing. Do you oh, see yeah, that, that audio voice. clip of him going around talking about Eeyore? Oh yeah, that's his, from his new audiobook, <laughs> a memoir. Which the title is very funny. I think it's like, um, I think I listened to the first chapter because he does the narration on the audiobook. Um, oh, awesome. Every Man for Himself and God Against All, a memoir. So he, <laughs> yeah, there's a, somebody clipped on Twitter. There's a part where he references the Winnie the Pooh character. He's like, Christopher Robin, Piglet, and Eeyore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like so it's dramatic. A good clip. Uh, I love the man. I love listening to him talk. I also kind of uh, hate him a little <laughs> now. Mm, just tell me about it. I, <laughs> there's so much. We've had this conversation before in films about animal abuse. And mm. in his film uh, Nosferatu the Vampire, I think was the title, yeah. which I absolutely loved. Um, there was the whole was behind the scenes about like, just what he was trying to do to get all the rats there. And he's like, nah, we'll dye them a different color. And then it like he boiled them in dye and like <laughs> yeah, most yeah. of them died. And like, okay, this is like kind of shit. It almost seems like at least in that example, in that film, he was just really uncaring towards, you know, rodents, which uh, mm-hmm. we can go into moral philosophy about blah, 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 blah. But A, rodents. B, it seemed to be for some purpose in the film for, like, the aesthetic environment. C, yeah. it seems like, you know, if if he knew that... I, I don't think his intention was to torture and kill the rats. It was just to, he had bad ideas of how to get the job done. Whereas in this film, it seems like, I don't know, half of it. <laughs> it's just like mm. you're going out of your way to to abuse animals and it seems like there's no real good purpose for it in the movie like the end of the fucking the spoiler discussion anyway everybody the end of the fucking movie like i can just imagine him behind the camera going telling Klaus, like okay now try and step on those monkeys i'm like why do we really need him trying to step on the fucking and then he tries to kneel on them he picks one up and he tosses and i'm like i don't understand like we can we can make some kind of an argument about like oh yeah this is about showing that the colonizers are the most savage of us all i don't know if that's the only way to communicate that is to just like abuse animals on screen <laughs> like that mm-hmm. that was making me uncomfortable the horse thing you just kind of like tossed it in the river and like oh good luck hope it gets to the other side it's like if anybody understands um like the body language of animals right with horses when its ears are are back down against his head um pressed pressed back like that that means it's under a lot of stress and uncomfortable and it was like that pretty much the entire film and you yeah. you can just like its tail almost caught on fire for like like, like fucking you big piece of shit you know i love i love I don't him even for know his how they managed to do that because it's like a, an enormous raft like in the middle of Peru, and yeah. they had like multiple horses, and not only that, they started a fire on the raft and had the horse interacting with the fire. Yeah, they kind of tied horses it up next fire. to it and just you know forced it to be there. It, it, like he, he was literally like the, the the horse was being absolutely abused and tortured for like the entire movie. They push it over like several times and then like fucking push it in the water, and it's like. F- 
its foot is like still on the fucking raft as it's like tr- like it, it makes me really uncomfortable klaus screams at one in the face yeah and i just i don't see a good i don't really see like a good artistic purpose for it especially when it's like just so blatantly torture so i've i've defended michelle hanukkah killing animals in his films where he you know there's a film where he goes to like a pig farm well not he Mm. but i mean maybe you could say that as the director there's characters like at a pig farm they use a nail gun on the pig's head i'm like that's one to one how they die for our food anyway (laughs) right that's yeah that's that's like one to one the uh, ethics of how we consume their meat another movie chops a chicken's head off that's one to one right that's literally just what we already do by consuming meat who cares yeah. right like if you eat it after who cares whereas like this is like you you you're going out of your way to to it's not even just killing an like i would rather you slit the horse's throat than abuse it throughout the entire length of your film's production i would rather you just like kill it on camera i think michelle hanukkah did that in one of his films i think there was a horse <laughs> throat slitting in one yeah. of his films this is just like what the fuck is your problem <laughs> like what's what's your <laughs> actual think... problem <laughs> I think it might have been an oversight of just how chaotic and crazy this production is. Because this is one of those films where there's a lot to gleam from the film itself, but almost the more interesting part is the story of how they even made this, how they got it together, and how enormous the scale and ambition is matched to what the actual, like, script or story is. Um, Because that that was kind of one of my bigger takeaways, was like... I was really into, I love that it was shot on location. I love that ambition. I love like, especially like right at the beginning where it's tens and tens and tens of people um, in the Peruvian highlands, all, all, all in the gear with the costumes on and everything. And it's like, wow, this is, this is crazy ambitious. And I, 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 I couldn't find any like good information on the budget, but it's, I'm pretty sure it was, it was fairly shoestring. Um, like Herzog was you know, he sold like he pawned his watch and stuff to pay mm-hmm. for food, and it's like pretty, pretty scrappy in that regard. Oh, no, it's it, a, it's completely scuffed, and I love that quality. <laughs> I, I love yeah, that yeah. energy, that, and that doesn't excuse how they treated the animals, but that's probably why it happened. It was a tunnel vision. I've got to get this project done. I want this, that, and that to happen here. We're gonna do that, and I guess. I've, I found a bit more meaning in the use of the animals than perhaps you did with what it was trying to do or say mm-hmm. with that. Um, and you did get some good shots out of it. And there were examples where I don't think there was like abuse going on necessarily. Like there was a shot with the that beautiful butterfly on the, the man's mm-hmm. finger holding that up to the camera. I don't know how that would be an abusive thing or the... Uh, yes. There's like a shot of the... I think it's a mouse. It's, uh, it's like saving its children. Yeah, like from, a possum or whatever. Yeah, cool. oh, and that I thing like, as well. I like that, um, yeah. So there were there were a few instances of the animals coming in, and there being an interesting bit of dialogue or imagery. Of like, yeah. I don't like what they did to the, the horse, aesthetic. but I think the image of abandoning the horse at the side of the river was quite a memorable thing. Seared into yeah. my mind. Yeah, um, the end yeah, result of that, it's just like. I so, agree so how they get there, the, yeah. the entire production of this, and what what is you know what's interesting about it, and why they talk about this movie in like film school. Um, is that essentially what's happening is uh, it's it's almost like the actual conflict because a lot of this is man versus nature. Yeah. It's not even just, it's not even like an, an imagined conflict. It's not something you have to translate narratively. You're just doing it. So in that sense, it's yeah. really cool. And as long as, you know, the ah, I, I feel, I feel less bad about him torturing actors a little who, signed up <laughs> consenting to it yeah to yeah. some degree even though they probably didn't know what they were getting into and were underpaid um and you know seeing all that those people on the raft with all the full armor i'm like i'm f- it seems mm-hmm. really unsafe like if one of you falls and, over i don't know how oh yeah you're getting out well, and some of the stuff like die. reading about because this was one of the other compelling things about it to me was this lead performance from uh, klaus Kinski, who reading mm. about him, you see what a nutter this fellow is. Like what mm. a what an insane character. Like he he hit someone on set with one of the swords, and if that uh, extra hadn't been wearing a helmet, he would have been killed by the sword. <laughs> he was like firing his Winchester when they were playing like a game of cards, and he shot oh, the he end of the, the finger people. off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the guy is actually unhinged. If you read his Wikipedia, he's oh, like. Wow. 
kind of notorious for this kind of stuff um and that is like fascinating to me he's like an egomaniac and he has this certain intensity to his performances because it was the same in nosferatu Mm -hmm. um and even his character in a for a few dollars more like he he has this kind of screen presence that (laughs) maybe only a psycho of his level can bring to the screen yeah Um, it's a very kind of holds it together it's a it's a very commanding face He's got a very uh, defined facial structure, and his eyes are like kind of Steve Buscemi eyes. <laughs> yeah, they're huge. And yeah, he like you you just him on screen is entertaining. Just him on screen is like there's something yeah. interesting about that. Just seeing him like look around or do fucking anything, right? Um, well, I, I get yeah. that. And the lack of there was a script i believe but there, was, there wasn't like storyboarding they weren't rehearsing there's like an improv kind of nature to what's going on that does dance between like capturing something brilliant and something a bit like uh you 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 had to present it this way because of the restrictions of trying to film this kind of stuff in peru like mm-hmm. <laughs> they're just living in the middle of nowhere so a lot of the a lot of the way the story moves the way the plot moves can be kind of a little bit confusing to follow or presented in kind of an awkward or clunky way simply because they didn't have stuntmen. They didn't have a bunch of this stuff. They didn't have like pyrotechnics and stuff. I think it was like a crew of eight people. I was wondering how Um, they did some of the effects, like the violence. Yeah. Like, did they just, they just shot like projectiles at people and what they had like a two by four under his chest or something? Like what, how did they do that? That was crazy. The guy that got got speared and like fell into the water. That was an insane shot. That's the thing that comes with the uh, the restrictions. I think like you get the that scrappy creativity, like the the beheading scene, the decapitation. Mm-hmm. It's pretty fun, um, <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, but then there are there, there are other instances where it is, yeah, just kind of difficult to follow what's going on. There's supposed to be this whole angle of well, it's very simple. The whole framing. It's just these conquistadors trying to find El Dorado. They're looking for gold. A very simple. Yeah, and it's just man versus nature going through the environment. But then there's this whole angle of the natives kind of picking them off one by one. And uh, just some of the way that's presented is a little bit like, oh, I guess okay, that happened. Cool. Mm-hmm. And then th- there's, there is a reliance on narration to keep you kind of <laughs> up to pace with what's going on. Because I feel like just the nature of how it was filmed, how it was put together, it almost you almost have to have some form of narration or some structure to bind it because mm-hmm. it's it is kind of jumping around and like things are advancing in a way where it's like oh there's a there's a prison in the camp and there's someone in the prison and then they kill the guard and escape but you don't mm-hmm. see any of that you learn it through exposition from the Klaus Kinski character who reveals it in a cool creative shot where he's like hunched over the rock and he's yeah, following like, like the hand blood shot. prints. Love that. Um, but just the communication of information I found to be a little bit, I don't know, a little bit all over the place. I, I just think because the nature of how, how scrappy it was, like I, I don't even know what you could really do otherwise with yeah. this, this crew I mean, team, like, but that's kind of what happens. This, th- this movie to me falls into the category of uh, vibe movies <laughs> where you know, if you're really loving the aesthetic of it combined with the soundtrack, like the tone and like, I, I guess just the overall like nature of the film, um, then that can do a lot and that can help you to be more attached or invested or, um, you know, pr- probably easier to follow the stories and the all the nuances and details and get all the extra bits of uh metaphor and <laughs> statements mm-hmm. out of it etc i really did like this film as a vibe movie to an extent um mm. i did like a lot about the soundtrack didn't love it overall as much like i re- i remember liking the nosferatu score a lot more um mm. although i think that wound up using some existing classical pieces too but anyway um there's things that i really loved about the music in this film i loved that uh, electric guitar when that came in the yeah that was like my favorite part about the score um and there's you know there's memorable striking shots and scenes and sequences 
but I'm not really that interested in it narratively as a whole. Like, I don't really mm-hmm. give a shit about the characters or what they're doing or if they achieve their goal, you know. Um, I found watching this movie, I I think at like three or four different times, I was just like looking at the aesthetic and like just the overall kind of, I don't know, it's not the same vibe, but I was reminded a lot of the film Godland, um, which is, is the guy Norwegian? I don't know. But it was a movie that I saw at TIFF like a few years ago. It's on Criterion now. Um, and I absolutely loved it. I think it's super underrated. Uh, I'm looking to actually, yeah, it was 2022. It wasn't that long ago. Um, yeah, I haven't seen this. Oh, it's fucking great. So I'm, I'm like eager. It's so good that I'm eager to check out his other film, uh, Hilner Pal- Palmason. He, oh, yeah. yeah, whatever his name is. That I was reminded of a lot watching this, but that <laughs> movie is just so much more impressive and engaging and uh, just breathtaking in terms of how it's shot. Don't get me wrong. There were some breathtaking shots in this movie too. So, yeah, I um, thought that was one of the best parts was the cinematography. I did yeah. find it pretty consistently stunning and breathtaking, um, especially knowing that there was not uh, rehearsals and not, storyboarding mm-hmm. and so, so some of the stuff they managed to achieve like really making a good use of uh foreground and background and keeping it in the same yes. shot and changing the subject matter loads of cool stuff like that uh really utilizing what they had in front of them and i think yeah just having that uh natural environment adds adds something too but then there's mm-hmm. like i don't know there's other character building stuff like the emperor when he sat on the cannon like where, where his groin is so that kind of imagery and it's like perfectly centered there's like lots of like memorable imagery used really well used to express character probably better than the actual dialogue and plot <laughs> in and of itself like i'm kind of there with you i i was never bored i was never uninterested but the yeah the main drive of what is happening in the the narrative is not really what i was attaching myself to no. it's kind of everything around it the the scope of it the scale of it and thinking like oh this this i wouldn't be surprised if this like inspired like apocalypse now or those kind of movies yeah you know, this nature what movies. year was um, apocalypse now 1979 yeah yeah uh, so yeah i like that about it a lot um i was actually thinking about and the, the reason I made this connection was because I think they have nearly the exact same runtime. I was thinking about The Seventh Seal, Ingmar Bergman. Um, yeah. Because it's, uh, well, that's set in the, like the 14th century, and this is mm-hmm. 15th century? 1560? Oh, it is the same runtime-ish. Right um, yeah. 90-ish um, minutes or whatever. And I was just thinking about how much I was connecting with what was happening in that movie and it was, it's not like an age or restriction thing in terms of that, because that was, what, 57, Seventh Seal? But it had certain hooks and it had certain uh, framings to it that kept me engaged, even though it did, it did have the like man versus nature thing. It had uh, the the religious angle. It had yeah. the period piece angle. Better conceptually. Uh, yeah, just probably a, a more solid script there. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I want to emphasize, I, I feel like when you say vibe movie it can i don't know for, for a lot of people can hear that as like oh it's long and boring or something no like no um, there's no that's not what i mean but sure. yeah i was never i was never dulled by it i was yeah it almost went by too quick like i almost feel like i could have had more of this story or an extended version of it where i felt like i was more engaged it with is, the narrative yeah like it, it is kind of weird it's a 90 minute movie not much happens within it <laughs> like really if we're to put it on paper yeah and i was kind of they, they start delving into things that made me think like oh that would have been cool if that was more of a through line with the film like how it towards the end when they're really up against it and they're going around in circles and they're running out of supplies and they're all going a bit mad and they start they're, they're not really sure how to interpret things in the environment and they're like is that real like is this what what is going on here? And they see that that boat up in the trees. It's like, oh, what a that was what a cool, stunning yeah. image to get in there. Um, and adding that angle of like the characters don't even really know if it's real, and you don't know if it's real as an audience member too, because you're kind of mm-hmm. exhausted there with them. And I don't know. There was there was some, despite not really engaging with the narrative, there was definitely a, a peril to the environment. 
Yeah, one hundred, one thousand percent. Yeah, I bought that it was like difficult for them to traverse through. They're just doing the, it. They are dropping like flies. <laughs> yeah, they are just. Anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, like it's stressful when they're, let's, they're stuck let's on the Let's go into the forest. And... Let's get these guys to like drag around this, even if it's a prop cannon. It looks heavy as fuck. I don't mm-hmm. know if Werner hurts it. Like, I guess his entire goal was like, let's find the the swampiest. <laughs> wettest part of this this environment and get the them to just dense. walk through it everybody's gonna get trench foot right everybody like, <laughs> you're, just, you're just walking with water and like probably organisms in your feet the, they talk about how the, like, the river the river's like flooded in a certain part of the film yeah and like that was not planned like the river actually did oh, flood wow. so they had to like quickly scramble to get it in and make it make sense and that's yeah i do love that kind of thing i think that's a certain creativity is brought out of people when they're just shoved into such yeah. an insane environment and i think that is very respectable yeah I, I i do like the idea of kind of going where you're necessarily forced to go in a sense this you know serendipitous filmmaking and when you're mm. doing this <laughs> you know if you're if a lot of what you're showcasing is man versus nature and you're just doing it then you do have the opportunity <laughs> to to just kind of see where it takes you i like that don't get me wrong i i i was deciding between so there's there's like two big ones from herzog in this i guess generation of, of his films uh that everybody insists that you need to watch to have like an understanding of his, his filmography this is one of them. The other one's Fitzcarraldo. And yeah. I am still very much looking forward to Fitzcarraldo. And I feel like that probably would have been the better choice. Although it it would have been impossible because I only really it's had time for a 90-minute movie right now. Yeah. And Fitzcarraldo is the one that has the companion piece documentary with it. So it's not only a three-hour movie, but it would also be an hour and a half documentary if you really want the full experience of it, right? So you're talking about my best friend or a different one. Uh, what is it called? I wrote it down. Hold on. It's called the burden of dreams is the documentary about it. So it's like, Oh, interesting. So there's another one the film. Oh, there's so what, what is it called? Well, Cause I was looking at this one, my best friend, which is about Herzog's relationship with oh, yeah. the lead, um, in this film. Okay, which looks shit. very interesting, Klaus Kinski. So that seems like you could almost have a full film yeah, marathon have with a, all of these. All that, shit. or even more, because you could, yeah, all of the. I what think year they is that? Together, like twelve, fifteen. So that was ninety nine. My best friend. Um, but they, Klaus uh, Kinski, has worked with him in a lot of films. So I think he's known him since he was young or something. And they, I cannot find it on IMDb. Seems nuts. Uh, it's because the original title is in German. Mein Liebste Freund. Oh no, it's not my best friend. It's my best fiend. Sorry, I've been saying friend this whole time. Yeah, that would do <laughs> when, it. There when I go. yeah, no, I noticed that when I I was reading it as my best friend. Um, but that's like the joke of the title yeah, is that the man is a fiend. Okay, yeah. interesting. I wonder. Okay, so I wonder. Are you, are you sure it's necessarily about specifically with Fitzcarraldo? Because in the plot summary on IMDb, it's talking about Aguirre also. So I think that might be like a more of an all-encompassing doc on their relationship with multiple films probably covered in it. Oh, yeah. So. It's about the... Yeah, it's not specifically about this one film. Yeah. There's a lot of discussion about uh, how he behaved on the record. Okay, cool. And, yeah, that yeah. should be interesting. I'll watch that for sure. Um, but yeah, the companion piece documentary that I mentioned uh, is like literally just about the production of Fitzcarraldo which oh, okay. people are saying is kind of like a necessary thing to check out. Um, and I'm still super interested in it. And I, you know, I do find a lot of value and interest and, and I, I, I do appreciate the discussion and the conversation around the filmmaking and the uh, situations that they were finding themselves in the particular way that it was filmed and just, you know, the, 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 the mm-hmm. scuffed nature of it. I, I like that for sure. But I, the film itself still has to do a bit more for me in terms of like a connection personally. Um, and it wasn't mm-hmm. quite there. And even though there are, there are things about this movie that really stick out to me and I'm like, wow, that's fucking beautiful. I wish that it was at service of something more. 
I wish that those same shots and those same really cool, great ideas and th- pieces of the film that work together were, were in service of a narrative that I cared about a bit more um, or in service of characters that I cared about a bit more or in service of just some kind of story that I felt more attached to and didn't really feel like I was kind of having to force myself to pay attention despite it being like a 90 minute <laughs> movie, right. you know? Whereas I found, I guess this is where the, the vibe thing you're saying about kind of connects a bit more mm-hmm. with me where I, I don't get bored, but my mind gets lost down what it's inspiring me with what it's showing me in mm. terms of like, well, this was 1560. It's not that long ago. People did dress like this, operate like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're looking for gold in in Peru. Um, the historical angle, yes, is that's like really interesting to me. I did, um, I did that, find that, that keeps that holds my interest. Really. Yeah, and apparently it's not even too bad with a uh, certain uh, accuracies and I don't know that na- the naturalistic kind of way it's presented doesn't feel like they're larping you know doesn't it's, it's not yeah <laughs> like embarrassing it's, yeah true that's a good way to put it yeah you buy that it's you know they're actually there they're in the environment there's only one or two times I was like pulled out and reminded that it was shot in the 70s someone like looks at the camera at one point but then after after afterwards you read that like most of the extras were just like random people that I guess Herzog managed to convince to be part of it it's like <laughs> a very <laughs> a very unique movie and I just feel like I don't know I don't know what to point at to say to even compare it to in terms of like something like this uh it's kind of like the 70s revenant almost <laughs> yeah, there is a comparison there for sure. Yeah. Although there, you know, the Revenant was done more safely <laughs> with a higher yeah, standard more animal of, rights, of uh, ethics yeah. and <laughs> so you know, now. like so probably they, they had house, a storyboard s- safety yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's some forget. laws that were pr- were protecting a lot of people, less yeah. exploitation. <laughs> you know. I get it. Like it it's it's interesting in the the scope of film history, and I understand why it's important to talk about and and uh, for it to be a part of a conversation. Uh, that doesn't mean that you are incorrect for not connecting with it, which uh, some people it's kind of weird that some people don't understand things like that. But uh, whatever, yeah, there are certain films people get funny about. Um. <laughs> If they have like yeah. a certain standing or perceived, oh yeah, you know, you know, you know, exception. you know the concept of art, right? It's it's. The, <laughs> I I believe that with art, there there are sacred institutions that you should not challenge, and that there are, so, that, that there's a <laughs> correct answer to uh, y- whether or not you vibe with or experience or enjoy or mm. what you rate a film. And it's because it's taught in film school and it's part of film history. And so this is the correct answer. It's like math, you know, art's a lot like math. There's, Binary. there's an answer you can study for it. And you just want to <laughs> repeat other things that other people have already said about the movie and not have your own experience with it. Cause there's a <laughs> correct answer and you have to learn what that is. That's what art is to some people. Apparently very weird. What do we call them? Like film fascists? Like what? It was, <laughs> what fascists. It's like trying to understand these people. It seems like it's coming from a lot of the same place of just like, oh, film this fash. is not. You're going against the norm, and that inherently is bad. Like, okay, I don't know. <laughs> no, I hear you. Yeah. So with that, I give this a five out of ten. I probably would have given it a six. I was feeling a six for like a lot of, uh, of the film. Uh, but then just closer to the end, just being bombarded with like the horse abuse and the fucking monkey abuse and like, Mm. and, and just coming to terms with like, not only that being in the film and so much of the film prominently being shit like that, but also coming to terms with like, okay, well the overall narrative happened. I don't find it to be particularly profound in terms of like ideas that I've never thought before, even what you're getting at with the subtext, like it's fine Na- like narratively i just didn't connect with it i love and appreciate a lot about it fucking pan flute guy was the only likable character he was a fucking ch- <laughs> he was a fucking chad wanted to see more pan flute <laughs> agreed but yeah just a personal level it was it was only ever going to be as high as a six anyway but i'm giving it a five because for mm. i just i just got pissed off by it 
I think, uh, yeah, I'm a, f- I'm a fair bit higher than you. Um, seven? At least in how it sounds. So it would be, it would either be a very low seven or a uh, high six for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'd need to see that other cut you're talking about with the English. I, I'm curious about that now. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if, I really want to see this My Best Fiend yeah. documentary too and I see feel like- how that frames all of this. I feel like I need to watch Fitzcarraldo before I watch that because I'm worried yeah, there same. would be spoilers for the movie in that probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would, I would watch yeah. that first too. Yeah. yeah, so I'm still, you know, I'm still hyped to check out Fitzcarraldo. I'm still hyped for Herzog and I find him a super interesting character um, in the same way that I find like Lars von Trier an interesting character, in the same way that I find Harmony or Corinne Lynch. an interesting character. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, there's some people that are just weird enough that I'm happy they're making art, and if the art is reflective of themselves, then it makes it interesting enough because they're weird. Um, yeah. I was, have you seen that clip of him getting shot in yeah. that Mark Kermode interview? Like, it, I'd forgotten it about was, that. It was um, not a significant bullet. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, wow. <laughs> this guy, I just want, like, I'm just compelled by him whenever he's on screen. Yeah. Like his, his bizarre cameo in uh, The Mandalorian as well. It's like, yeah. what, <laughs> what oh, are yeah. you doing here? <laughs> There's, um, I guess you are. Yeah, he's he's like a character for the fucking ages. Oh right? yeah, he's forever. Like you can parody him and know exactly who. So like, yeah, it's like a Simpsons character who's like stepped out of the screen. Exactly, just, like, living with us. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's mad. Him eating his own shoe and like <laughs> him doing a sequel to a movie and pissing off the director of the original because he said he didn't watch the first one. He's like, how do you know? Like, just being like this big fucking troll and just like clearly just not giving a shit about other people and kind of being a psychopath, but like a lovable psychopath Mm. where you're just like, yeah, Yeah, I get that. Oh, grandpa. (laughs) He has a fascinating uh, body of work. Like if you look at his IMDb, it's just like everywhere, all over the place. You got drums, you got documentaries, you got this random stuff. He's like acting and stuff. It's yeah. He's always interesting to me. Um, And yeah, I had a lot of fun going and filling this blank in. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can do Fitzgeraldo soon. Although I'm not, it's not going to be my next recommendation. Maybe something next year. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially with that two hour thirty eight. Yeah, <laughs> three hour movie and two hour and a half long documentaries. We need to, if we do it on the podcast, and I might just decide to do it not on the podcast. I might just do that in my check. Yeah, Who same. knows? Who knows? Yeah, that is but I'm awesome. I'm excited for it. Um, Herzog, I love you, but also go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> is how i'm feeling right now yeah fair enough all right thanks for the discussion i guess it's question time yeah uh let's do some questions then from the sardonicast community head over to the suggestion thread over there on the subreddit just like gazabata did who said hi irs and ymca do you guys (laughs) by any chance partake in youtube shorts slash instagram reels if yes and i'm pretty certain the answer is yes what does your feed look like i for one can never get enough of that fella benjamin shapiro i don't know why they spent spelled like that destroying feminists with facts and logic i also like it when the bottle full of orbeez goes down the stairs and then it breaks and then the orbeez come bouncing out of the floor in a magnificent display of color Yeah, so shorts or TikToks or Instagram reels or whatever you want to call them. Mm-hmm. You ever find yourself looking at these? Are you in the, are you in the doom well, scroll? Well, so YouTube kind of just like integrated shorts in a way where you couldn't avoid them anymore. Um, yeah. Because they needed to compete with TikTok. And so it's also kind of funny that YouTube essentially it. just... Was it... I heard something. Was Sorry. It? No, no I, was, I, was whipping up my sh- I was whipping up my shorts to see what type of stuff would be on there. My audio was on, so it started blasting a short really loudly. Okay, great. Keep that in. Um, <laughs> it, so eventually I was kind of just watching shorts over time. And it's like, I understand the appeal because it's like a quick fix. It's I, I also don't like it because it reminds me of like the same type of like addictive personality shit of like a slot machine. You know? Oh, yeah. Where it's like you're oh, kind of gambling with each press. You're like, will this one be good? Will this one be a good video? It's like it reminded me of like back when 4chan was like the only t- entertaining website. And even though <laughs> B was shit, like every once in a while there'd be a good post. So you're just like scrolling yeah. forever. Like, well, will, th- will there be a good post today? Damn, sort of thing. It's like, I don't know. Huh? It just. <sighs> Whereas like I, I, I also like YouTube as an art form in terms of like high effort video 
content or like documentary mm-hmm. or like you know just essay or you know a skit joel haver you know like fun stuff um i find that a lot of shorts content is scams <laughs> oh, <laughs> whether yeah, it be completely. Lying about content. the content of your video or stealing. Did you see that guy on Twitter right now? The new main character of today? No. No, there's a dude. Who, who, who unironic. I got to show you this. Um, I'm sure I could find it. I get a lot of like fake Joe Rogan ads, like AI mimicking like Joe Rogan like this. Oh, that's fun. This stops me snoring. You know, it pisses like, me shit. off. So I, I started doing, I, I finally bit the bullet and installed TikTok on my phone. Oh my um, God. Because I was like, well, okay, I'm watching shorts anyway now. Like, wh- whatever. <laughs> yeah, there's no difference. There's <laughs> whatever. <none. laughs> I'm, if I'm watching YouTube shorts already, I might as well have a better algorithm. I hear the algorithm's better. And so, yeah, I finally installed TikTok on my phone. Within three scrolls, I have like an unofficial medical diagnosis <laughs> of like something that I've been talking about forever about how like I hear a song and it just constantly loops in my head. And there's a woman like, have you ever felt like this? There's actually a form of autism that people. I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like this is exactly what it has been happening in my head forever. And so that was weird. <laughs> like the third <laughs> scroll that happens. Um, and then I haven't. I've only done it like maybe a total of like three nights for like thirty minutes each um, on TikTok. Mm. So I haven't gotten like that much, but I'm pissed off that seemingly. From the best of my understanding, there's no way to tell the algorithm I don't like something. Because sometimes I watch something and I'm disgusted by it, but I watch through the whole thing. Where someone's literally, they have the scary music and they're like, just saying like, the Simpsons (laughs) predicted uh, that we'll all die (laughs) in the year 2800. And I'm like, this is just to scare children like what the yeah. fuck and i watched through the whole thing in disbelief that they're actually doing that and they're just lying and they're just getting views and lying and, and then i'm like fuck i'm contributing to the problem and there's no button i can press to say i dislike this and so then i'm scrolling a bit more and then i get another one of those fucking things because i watched through the first one i'm like fuck how do mm. i i want to be able to curate the algorithm like in, in a just add like little bits of manual curation to the algorithm because sometimes you watch something yeah. all the way through and you hate it. And you're like, hey, fuck this shit. You're just pissed off. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not savvy enough with TikTok to know if the, there probably is something you can do. But I know a lot of them work by, yeah, it's your engagement with it. So if you like it, comment on it or whatever. That It sees that as, oh, you like this. You need more mm-hmm. of this. Or or watch time. Um, if you, you scroll see, um, immediately off it, it won't do anything. Let me see. Yeah, this is the new, this is the Twitter main character today. Oh, I saw that, but I didn't watch it. Let me see. It's fascinating. And I scrolled down his Twitter profile, and there's like a lot of the same. He just, he's trying to promote his like, I'm a genius for reposting stolen YouTube content. (laughs) It's like, come to my free Discord. And I'm sure eventually he'll be selling some sort of seminar or some shit. Yeah. Like, how can you, how can you post that and be like, wow. This is so, so weird. Just lack self awareness. Oh yeah, he's like, here's how, here's how you make it big on TikTok. I'm making twenty thousand dollars a month, and then just unironically goes like, first you just search for a popular YouTuber, then you screen record that on your phone, then you <laughs> search for GTA footage of cars rolling down hills, then you screen record that, then you use this app and blah 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 blah. Whoa. He has he has an office for some reason. He has he yeah. writes down his list of goals at the beginning. He's like, I want to make a million dollars or like whatever the fuck his stupid goals were at the beginning. Like then he sits down in front of a computer and then whips out his phone and does like two <laughs> f- f- let's say ten minutes of work on his phone. <laughs> Whoa, he's like and he's, bragging about the money and oh, stuff. Yeah. He's showing and, it on screen. Oh yeah. What? Yeah. And he and, and the the way his phrasing too, he's like, when I start my shift, you don't start your <laughs> fucking shift, you fucking asshole. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Work Steal Rumble, another people's Sneeko. content. Jesus. Wow. If I had no self respect, I could be making twenty thousand dollars a month. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you just gotta <laughs> for like an additional ten doing. minutes of work per day. <laughs> it's the I like the community notes that are attached to that. Portrayed in this video is intellectual property theft. It's illegal under World <laughs> Intellectual Property Organization Treaty. So yeah, hopefully oh, yeah. he gets trouble for that. Pe- people were calling him out for it, and he's like, he's doing the typical XQC, like, no, people 
people want me to do this. They get more <laughs> money from it somehow. And then also them, one of his it's classic exposure. responses, uh, he tweeted, uh, I'm going to say this verbatim because I'm not going to search it up, but I read this earlier today, like a few hours ago. He was saying like, oh, well, if it's illegal, then so what? Who's going to sue me over it? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just waiting. Ooh, Eventually it, someone's, someone's going to do it. Eventually someone's going to sue Sniper Wolf or XQC or this mm-hmm. fucking dumb turd. Please. Yeah. It's not like it's not like case law doesn't exist for this, by the way. It's like it's like a level below, like this shorts format. It's like a level below the, oh, the yeah. sniper wolf thing, because you know she's there, she's stealing people's content, but at least she's in the corner, like reacting. <laughs> she's <laughs> pretending to make it's, a transformative piece of yeah. content. Whereas these, like, oof, if you're new to TikTok and you don't haven't seen some of the the engagement bait, is insane on there it's like every everything is just designed to like trick these reward kids. cycles in the brain yeah exactly kids who are all addicted they're given their smartphone when they're like eight or nine yeah i i would i would be a puddle of goop on the ground if i was like nine and i was given this stuff if i would i wouldn't stand a chance if i was, <laughs> I was if i was handed a phone with tiktok right now i would be i'd have like two iq i'd be like, <laughs> like yeah i don't i i um I think I was born at the right time. <laughs> yeah, just missing this. I'm very happy about that. Like yeah. to remember my childhood without this stuff intruding. Like yeah. man, because it, it, it is crazy. They're, it, they're just they're just trying to trick you. They're like it's literally just you, scams. The I, whole fucking. Like, I got the, one that was like, um, make sure you if you press more and then go to share, you can see which apps are tracking you. Oh yeah, that's what that fucking I I swear that scary music guy did something like that too. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. could just, you do if you do this thing that you press like it is then this will happen. And then just yeah. I guess enough children who are gullible and new to like everything yeah. will press that and then either not know how to undo it or just not care and be like wait well, like, damn it or t- like maybe TikTok I have to wait 10 it. minutes. If you go to if you go to the screen where you can press to share on TikTok TikTok measures that as an engagement metric oh, to boost the video more. <laughs> yeah, it's people. really dirty. Yeah, it's it's gross what they're doing over there. Because like, and then they do obvious stuff like a lot of my feed is just like Amazon finds you would never think of, and it's like a a bunch of these random like pointless, stupid like kitchen gadgets or whatnot. Yeah, but they'll have like. They'll put some vague sexual imagery in it somewhere. So then all the comments are like, oh, did you see it two seconds? Well, why is nobody talking about blank? You know, it's all engagement based stuff. That's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It goes deep. Yeah. <laughs> Human beings are fucking stupid. Well, so yeah. Where does the buck stop with this? You know, we just unleashed this beast. <laughs> which yeah, is like and it's, poisoning it's op- people <laughs> it's owned and operated in china they don't give a shit about <laughs> copyright law <laughs> like, and so youtube youtube has essentially had to like change their stance on copyright for shorts so you can still monetize yeah. uh, a short if it has copyrighted music in it unlike if it was not a short because they're trying to compete with tiktok and the reason why tiktok is huge is because they're you know it's just a bunch of other copyrighted content, and yeah. I agree. I agree that like okay, if let's say there's a time limit to it, it's under a minute, and you're using part of the song, and like even if you're using the song for a minute, if what you're doing in the video is transformative enough, like I agree that you should be able to monetize that content. Don't get me wrong, like I believe in fair use, mm-hmm. um, but I think it's funny that YouTube is essentially just kind of given up on that for their shorts. <laughs> they're like no we're just it it can still detect it through content id but you're still making money off of it and we're just we're abandoning it for this format because they need to try and catch up to tiktok it's funny because it's the only competitor to them it's the only real competitor yeah that's probably why they love sniper wolf is because she's stealing tiktok content (laughs) so much of tiktok (laughs) content is stolen youtube content i think tiktok's actually passed um youtube as far as minutes watched and overall probably on the internet i saw a uh a, a, a data sheet of that the other day and i think it's past it now which is i don't know what's funny is i probably i would not have installed tiktok if it weren't for youtube shorts because i was kind of like well <laughs> i'm <laughs> already doing it, now, it. Yeah. <laughs> they all have it like facebook has shorts i'm pretty sure i know <laughs> instagram has reels yeah yeah i'm not it's i don't use instagram form. really no nah, i fucking hate instagram i have three pictures on instagram 
maybe <laughs> two pictures in a video. I yeah, I lost my password, so I'm good on that. Yeah, who cares? Um, yeah, who cares <laughs> I, so man, it's, it's just too much at a certain point, especially the TikTok stuff. It's just. Oh. Yeah, so I'm trying, I'm making a conscious effort that if I see a furry video in my feed that I watch it all the way through so that eventually over time it'll mm. just be mostly just furry dumb shit. And even if it's cringe, I I will enjoy it. Even if it's bad, I'll be like, you know what, it's, it's bad, but it's my fucking community, I guess. <laughs> Like I, yeah. I'm still, I, I would rather have that than scary music scams for children and just scams in general and lies and bad information, <laughs> no fact checking, just saying things and just a bunch of gullible fucking idiots that are willing to eat up anything. Mm-hmm. It's just, it pisses me off. Like we, misinformation's already bad enough. Yeah. yeah. It's already bad enough. Yeah. Leave the kids alone. <laughs> like, come on. No, they're the they're the ones who are getting the the brunt of it. Yeah, they're getting the worst of it. You know, like you mentioned the when you first went on TikTok, you got that like the mental health type thing. Um, if you look at the not like the searches on like mental health search terms on there, oh yeah, it's, like, it's nuts. It oh yeah, crazy. everybody's self diagnosing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me included yeah. at this point. <laughs> it's like well yeah, and it's like where kids go to find information. They don't use like Google or whatever. They just search on TikTok. Oh yeah, so <laughs> every every Zoomer in Gen Alpha is like TikTok is where they go to find things and learn things. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> get answers to things. Yeah, I'll, I'll search it on TikTok, which is like the worst idea. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. like every yeah. everything is either a scam or like an ad or just some kind of like manipulative content that is trying to it's literally just trying to get you to buy something or to get you to click on something, and it's yeah. all just dishonest nonsense. Yeah, it's- that, that's the that's the overwhelming majority, like ninety nine point nine 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 percent of like what exists on on that platform, and to a large oh, extent definitely. YouTube Shorts, but not nearly as bad as TikTok. I think yeah. I think with my engagement of it, I'm able to keep it under control because I don't. My rule is like I'll just scroll till I get annoyed. So I normally watch like two, and then I just won't go on it for like days. Um, yeah, but may- maybe it would have. Yeah, I'm, I just know I would have been helplessly addicted to this, and I dread to think well, like my younger cousins, like what their <laughs> their engagement of this stuff is like. Because I can I can just imagine it like just doom scrolling eight-year-olds like just watching Fortnite fails for like 10 hours you know like (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's yeah yeah there's something dystopian about it yeah i gotta i gotta make my algorithm better or something but i guess if i did that then i'd want to spend more time on it so maybe it's better that it's all shit yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah, just, dip, just dip your pinky toe in every now and again and yeah. vomit in your mouth and go back to what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, so this one is from some total rando. This is for Alex to ask Adam How many roars could one scar roar until his throat <laughs> got scarred and roar? Would the answer become part of the Lion King law or would that violate <laughs> some sort of copyright law? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I understood that, that. <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not, um, but I don't have an answer. I get that only God knows how many. <laughs> I like that. That was nice. Uh, but we have a real <laughs> one here from uh, Real Big Dog 2. I know Adam is a Silent Hill fan. Not sure about Alex, but do you have any interest in the Silent Hill 2 remake being done by Bloober Team? The guys behind the medium and layers of fear. Also, have you guys heard anything about the train wreck that is Silent Hill Ascension. Um, I've always wanted to play Silent Hill 2. I've heard nothing but good things. Do you, um, I, if you need, if you want to play Silent Hill 2, I will give you instructions on how to do the PC version with um, all the fixins. Just let me know later. I will. Yeah, there. Well, because it's like, what have they done? To uh, it? All right. So the big meme about Silent Hill within the fandom and community is that every other um, successful like horror game IP, the, the, their community actually gets things that are <laughs> worthwhile. Mm-hmm. Like resident evils got resident new Evil games and like the, the good remakes of the old games are at least serviceable. Um, 
you know, all these other IPs. Whereas Konami just decided to stop making games for the most part and instead are doing slot machines because <laughs> uh-huh. it's a way more profitable. All the pachinko um, stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, they've abandoned the IP. For a brief moment, they released something called the HD Collection. Uh, and that was like a decade ago, I think. And it was Silent yeah, Hill 2 that. and 3. And there, it is plagued with just like you shouldn't. There, there's videos on this. It's, it's a train wreck of like, you did that is not how you want to experience those games. Um, Silent Hill 2, the best way to play it, I mean, like, sure, you could always do like the PS2 version if you wanted to. Um, but the best resolution and the best way to play it is on PC with something called like, I think it's the Enhanced Edition, like, and it's a mod that you can install for Silent Hill 2 to uh, allow you to... Uh, output in higher resolutions. There's like improved um, like textures and lighting and stuff in ways that like for the most part is very true to the intentions of the original. So they like clean up some of the audio in some parts. Like it's it's yeah. one of the better um, fixes you could make, like mods in terms of mm-hmm. something. And that and that's what the Silent Hill community is forced to do is. Uh, have the community itself <laughs> make the <laughs> the games playable on PC. Silent Hill Four is available on GOG, G O G or whatever. Uh, there's a mm-hmm. PC version for that. Uh, Silent Hill Three you can play on PC. Silent Hill One I think is on maybe PC. Yeah, it is. It's for sure on PC. But I think it's also you can do it on, on like PlayStation Network or something. Anyway, I'm not looking forward to Bloober because they suck. They honestly suck. They're terrible. The mm. medium is one of the worst games fucking ever. Super boring. D- can't it, unplayable. Like even on a good PC, it's one of the most like un- unnecessarily resource chugging, poorly optimized games ever. Layers of Fear is one of the stupidest fucking most awful <laughs> pretend <laughs> scary games ever. It's a walkthrough simulator. It was just a rip off of like fucking uh pt and uh antechamber in the sense that mm-hmm. every single notable thing that happens in the game is just you turn around and it's different that's the entire game right you turn around and it's different wow this is like pt on drugs man like it's <laughs> it's so stupid it's not scary it runs at like fucking 10 frames per second i installed it on three different like I, I was going between like pc and like xbox one trying to find a version because i thought there was something wrong with my copy i was like what why is the frame rate so bad nope that's just how the game runs that's just how the game runs it's like 10 frames per second fuck these people they've never made anything good i don't know why they're responsible for this franchise it's because konami doesn't give a shit and yeah i've heard about silent hill ascension i'm not sure really what it is (laughs) it's like an interactive movie thing like i was i was thinking like it's it's not a game like it's not something i can stream is it like no right a thrilling new genvid interactive streaming series where you along with the rest of the audience can impact the canon of silent hill what yeah i don't know what it is i've i've only just heard people complaining about it on the subreddit and i think people were saying it has like weird predatory microtransactions or something That's, like yeah it does sound like that kind of thing. maybe they're trying to turn it into a live service or something maybe Wow. I don't know what the fuck it is. Can somebody please <laughs> make a post in the Someone subreddit explain. telling yeah. me what it is and how I should watch it? Because if I want to do something that I know is going to be bad, I want it to mm-hmm. be something I can make some sort of content out of. And whether that means streaming yeah. it or doing like a watch along. But if it's interactive, I can't really do that. Like maybe I should just stream it on kick or something like I don't know what I should be doing. I don't know. I don't know what. A, it's, somebody tell me what it is and what I should do with it. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. I uh, I've been very busy and so I haven't really had the time to uh, check in on it. Yeah, blooper yeah. fucking sucks. Anybody that's like optimistic about that in a non cautious way is just coping. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I was when I when the stories started circulating of a Silent Hill two remake, I was like kind of enticed. I was like, oh cool, like the Resident Evil remakes have been awesome. Um, so much love and affection put in. Uh, Dead Space was really good this year as well as a remake yeah, I check out that type remake thing. Too, yeah. Um, but then, yeah, Bloober Team attached. <laughs> so, uh, can put like Blue Point on this or s- someone who's like really good at remakes. Yeah, like okay. why? 
<laughs> Why? Yeah, because did Blair Witch in 2019. That, that was sucked. the only one that I kind of enjoyed. I liked things about that one. And it ran yeah. fine for the most part. I forgot they did that one. That one was that one was fine. That was the only thing that wasn't the worst, biggest piece of cancer ever. <laughs> and then the entire the entire last chapter of that game just turned into fucking layers of fear again, which was annoying, but whatever. Uh, oh, it looks like I've got to go to the community for this one. Oh, well. Help us. <laughs> Help. <laughs> I'm too busy. <laughs> Why don't we end on this one from uh, Ro Moen. Chris Tuckman recently made a video discussing his concerns about the changes in the movie theater industry as superhero movies are driving less people to theaters. How do you see the landscape changing? Are you concerned about movie movie theaters going away without big tentpole movies? If superheroes are done, what type of film replaces them? I'm concerned it's going to be video game movies. Would much prefer to see a big budget or to project from filmmakers like Nolan and Villeneuve. Love your podcast. Keep up the great work. Uh, I've been screaming from the rooftops about the video game onsla onslaught for years now, and it's coming. That's that's been my theory for ages. Like Zelda, the, yeah, Zelda's coming now. Uh, FNAF was just a huge success for the Mario movie this year. There's uh, the audience like capture with video games is like the older, like our generation gets or whatever, and as the boomers fall away. Every new child born is basically a new little gamer. True. Much bigger industry um, as far as turnover than film. So I would not be surprised if that's just kind of where things settle. Like yeah. it's IP, it's less risky. Everyone knows these things already. Like the Mario movie is just a dream come true as far as advertisers and yeah. product placement and merchandise all of this is concerned. <laughs> merchandise, uh, yeah, it's like a dream come true for this. It's like it's easier than superhero stuff because at least you got to like, true, <laughs> yeah, you know, like it does seem too exploitable at the moment. Yeah, it seems like the yeah the direction um, seems like an easy answer. But that's not that's not to say I'm not re like reveling in what's happening with <laughs> like not that I ever want a film to do bad, but sometimes it is deserved with like how you've pushed audiences with like the Marvels, how that's doing with just the litany of uh, Disney failures this this year. I can't say I'm shedding a tear over the billions they're losing on their misplaced franchises. I'm actually really curious to see what this like Lion King prequel is it. In the John Favreau style, yeah. like, like who knows? Who that's knows? Do. Yeah, what the fu Barry Jenkins, everybody. <laughs> that's the only thing. But man, they've 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 had plenty of good directors before, and like, oh, it's not going to be good. No, 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 no be, chance in hell. It's gonna but be also, I feel like more good. people are turning on that Lion King movie the more years pass. Like, I'm constantly seeing like people mocking it and scenes from it being shared of how bad it is and like, it's almost like i was right the entire time <laughs> and everybody yeah. else was fucking pretending <laughs> for it's <some> crazy <laughs> it's actually crazy the member berries were strong at that point but people i don't know they're, they're turning on the member berries a little bit unless it's mario <laughs> well people are starting to see through the um the cynical veil <laughs> right yeah. people are starting yeah. to when it when it gets done enough times, people start to clue into what's fucking happening, right? And yeah, yeah there's a when you get two or three of these live action remakes a year, like they were they were getting a bit too big for their britches on that, you know? Yeah, that and also you know all the billion two thousand movies and eight hundred TV shows of Marvel per year that they're putting on Disney Plus or whatever. Like, uh, I need to watch They've all this. They've all their context. major all their major brands. Yeah, it's it's insane. Um, and now, yeah, Disney Plus is like put them in quite a predicament. So, well, <laughs> now what people we've trained our audience to wait for things to be put on Disney Plus. <laughs> and we've, yeah. can, we've also trained them with how we've like split up these stories between these two different formats of films and shows and like tried to merge it they've just yeah they've really fucked it for themselves and i feel no sympathy it is a very um like like many profit driven companies it is a very short-sighted <laughs> yeah, uh, short plan that they had it's crazy <laughs> make a lot of money really quickly and then oops then panic. What the hell? <laughs> what do we do now? Oopsie. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, we're running out of other IP to buy and ruin. We only like, know well. how to do one thing. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and even then, that one thing used to be like animated stuff. They're getting into oh, yeah. hot, hot water now with like tweeting AI or what people theorize to be like AI. It's one hundred thousand percent. That's AI. I've seen that image. That's definitely AI. Yeah, 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 for sure. And like, yeah, some of the Disney shows using AI for the intros and stuff. It's like they're a money company. <laughs> Wait, they're bankrupt. not an animation yeah. company. They're a money company. No. Yeah. 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 Well, what do you expect? Um, yeah. I don't know if um, it, it, there there seems to be like kind of a a big trope of like true story things happening right now. I don't know how long that will last or how Biopics, many of those will be successful. Yeah. A lot of those seem to be like dumped straight onto streaming anyway, but who knows? <laughs> um, I feel like that was uh, Bohemian just, Rhapsody's fault. That's maybe so yeah. successful. Um, yeah. Either way, I guess it just shows a general lack of creativity in the industry when people have to just follow like these trends of like, oh, well, this did something successful, so we're going to try this. It's like, you know, look at, look at like, it's, without Spider Verse, we wouldn't have animated uh-huh. movies in theaters that have interesting styles <laughs> right now. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> but even then, it's like the, the way it's been, like, I like Puss in Boots and this Ninja Turtles and whatnot, but it's like, it's so obvious what yeah. they're doing, you know? It's like, it's our Spider-Verse now. It's yeah. <laughs> we Spider-Verse now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. It's like you can do so um, much more. I just, I just want to see more original concepts driven by artists and talented people. I hope that, I hope that the, uh, what is the metaphor? Canary in the coal mine? I don't know. That's yeah, probably not Yeah, Canary in the coal mine. Um, yeah, that's right. I, I hope that, I hope that, what they pay attention to is the Barbie movie. Yeah. And not in a way where it's like, oh, Barbie's the IP, but we've already had this conversation and we know that that's what they're going to take away from it. They're going to make a fucking Hot Wheels movie, right? So <laughs> it's just going to be the Mattel <laughs> cinematic universe, the MCU. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, they'll take away all the wrong conclusions from the Barbenheimer thing. Um, yeah, and yeah. we'll just wind up having the same conversation forever. <laughs> 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 this is just how things go and uh, we can only try to make our voices heard and hope that the people with the money get a fucking clue Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it is i don't know people get they get quite doomer about it but i don't know there are plenty of good movies still coming out exactly it's you just gotta filter it a bit more yeah Yeah. support the ones you You like i would i would go even as far as to say to buy them on physical media Mm. if you like it true there is there is always a hunger though for uh i feel like something in that more middle space like the things do come and go in that space depending on yes um and the, I, I don't i i don't know the best way to like phrase it i guess that sort of a more of a mid-budget instead of these ridiculous inflated 200 if not 300 million like blockbusters it's just just unsustainable it's like kind of mimicking the the video game industry with that where like just everything yeah. is taking so long and it's so expensive and the budgets are so inflated um that there is something unsustainable <laughs> about it so hopefully this kind of middle market can rise up yeah we only want to make benefit. we only want to make movies that that need a billion dollars to break even <laughs> like you need to make a billion yeah. dollars at the box office for this to even be worth your time like that's what you're shooting for so, fuck off yeah. i hope yeah, i do hope we get more medium budget movies after like marvels being a flop and probably a bunch of other shit like wish yeah. seems to be a flop like i don't know how much they spent on that less wish yeah, more a Leo. crazy flop year lots of the big uh big tent poles have been like flopping left and right and i don't know i'm kind of i'm kind of laughing in the corner over here because yeah <laughs> I don't feel bad about it. It was so it. fucking greedy, you know. It's it's not <laughs> Didn't like they be this way. Good. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. In fact, some of them are like historically bad. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm okay, Did you see the Madam Web trailer? I'm so hyped. I did. Oh, that man. Looks special. Sony's Sony's the only one like just yeah. <laughs> they got no fear. Hell yeah. <laughs> They're just taking I'll watch that, that one in its... theaters. <laughs> the, 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 like, oh man i actually couldn't believe that shit that was crazy what a great trailer it's like and that, that's not even it though because there's craven as well like that the, we're swimming in the sony shit <laughs> yeah that, see that's fun 
That, that's that almost that, that's almost self aware because of how like egregiously <laughs> exploitative it it's is. It's like yeah, it's the most extreme <laughs> example of it. Where it's like they're, they're not even trying to hide it. Yeah, I it's love like, that. You know, Craven's gonna make like five dollars, right? Like yeah, but they get to advertise <laughs> the all their Sony products in it, so <laughs> it's worth it. It's like it's yeah. the same as buying an ad on TV, except people pay you to see the ad. <laughs> That's their market. That's their strategy. I find it a very ingenious <laughs> yeah. thing to as do. A, as a Sony. business, yeah. yeah. G- genius, man. Yeah. Nice one, Sony. <laughs> More Papa John scenes in your movies, please. <laughs> yes, please. All right. I guess that's it for questions. Those were some good, meaty, awesome questions. Had, had a lot yeah, of fun with those. Thank you. Want to make a recommendation? So it's my time for a wreck. Back down to me. I'm not recommending wreck. Uh, but that to say, <laughs> I'm recommending something I know you're going to be upset about, and I'm oh, great. Be upset about. It, but Sweet. We, I feel like there's a torture conversation time. to be had here. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen it, so I don't know the level of torture that this is. But I want to talk about the Oscar-winning 2004 film Crash. Paul Haggis, I want to, I want to have this conversation. All right, great, thank you. It was uh, this was an an inevitability. We had to talk about it at some point. Yeah, this was a yeah. required movie for i knew that we were t- we would talk about this on the podcast yeah it's someday. been on my list for like a long time yeah i feel like now right before we crash before christmas we can crash into this yeah infamous movie like i'm kind of excited actually to see what there will be a here. discussion <laughs> okay <laughs> there will be a discussion of this film nice one all right looking forward <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to be spoiled for 2004's Crash, best picture winning film directed by Paul Haggis, watch nice. it before the next episode comes out. These episodes come out every two weeks. You can listen to them early by going to sardonicast.com, signing up for premium. It's only $2 a month. You get to download the episode early. You can listen to it on whatever you want. Mm. Okay. Any device, you just get the episode. Uh, Patreon.com slash Sardonicast. You can listen to it through the platform there as well if you prefer Patreon. $2 a month also. Uh, We got merch, link in the description. Christmas is coming. It's coming. Last chance. (laughs) (laughs) I think the episode (laughs) after this is going to come out on Christmas Day. That's right. um, There's a first. Is it? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I remember a Christmas Day episode. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Well, it, it could be the first time we've noticed. Just smile and wave. That's what I say. All right, smile yeah. and wave. What's that from again? <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> I, it's so on the tip of my tongue. Oh, come I'm on, you must you. know this. Just All smile right, and wave, on. boys. <laughs> Just smile and wave. <laughs> it's. <laughs> Oh, wait, no, come on, come on. It's so, it's so Come on, we, we mentioned, we mentioned the franchise it's from in this very episode. Oh, it's Madagascar. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. the penguins. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, have a happy Hanukkah mm. or Christmas or, or Kwanzaa. sit at home and be a fucking miserable atheist if you want. Mm, Grinch it over here. Be a fucking pagan about it, which is also Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If you be a have a happy holidays. Oops, getting canceled now. I can't say that. Oh god. They're trying to take away our freedom to only have to say one thing and not be able to see say whatever you want. <laughs> have a happy holidays and a happy Shrek year. Next have year. A smile. Have next a wave. year's the year of the Shrek. I can see it coming. I guarantee it. All right. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.